O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. Psalms 63 verse 1a. Start your day in the refreshing presence of God, and get empowered to face the demands of the day. Join the online morning devotion every Monday to Saturday via any of our streaming platforms at 7 a.m. GMT plus 1 and experience the power of God in your life. I declare clear demarcation. The suffering and hardship on earth right now. You be exempted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Ibato Steven Dominguez. Making this video from Lagos, Nigeria. I want to testify on God's goodness and mercy and favor for my life. God favored me miraculously with a job through a friend. I'm grateful to God from the inception of the morning devotion. I have keyed into all prophetic Someone excited to be part of this service, stand to your feet and give Jesus a shout of praise. You are welcome to today's service in Jesus' mighty name. For your testimony, kindly go behind the source entrance. Officials are there to document you to the glory of God. For those here at the global headquarters in Psalm 133 verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. In unity, you will thank God for the understanding of God's work coming your way in this service that will cause you to enjoy continuous progress in life and family. Raise our voice and appreciate God. Faithful Father, we give you all the glory and praise. Lord, we thank you for the understanding of your word coming our way in this service that will cause us to enjoy continuous progress in life and family. In Jesus' mighty name, I appreciate God. Lift your hands and give God the praise and glory. Your name is exalted in the heavens, exalted in the earth. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, your kingdom reigns. Forever, your kingdom has no end. 
give the Lord a shout of praise. He has done marvelous things, amen. He has done marvelous things, amen. The Lord our Savior has done marvelous things, amen. He has done marvelous things, amen. The Lord our Savior has done marvelous things. He has done marvelous things. Thank you. 
seated in God's presence. In Papa's book, Family with a Difference, Papa said, every wonderful family you see follows the details of the master architect, that is, God and his word. Jam your hands to the glory of God as we invite the following testifiers to share their testimonies. If you are clapping, clap like the next testifier. Godwin Uchewon. Eyene, Emmanuel, and Benebo, Ibim, while they come, listen to the following information. A very warm welcome to this awesome service. Visit the Knowledge Center or e-store at smhos4.com immediately after the fourth service to obtain today's message and all the messages in hard copy and flash drive. Or subscribe to our only collections on MP3 and DVD. Amongst the materials are message, April 2024, week of spiritual empowerment, praise for greater exploits, glory in 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books, the wonders of wisdom, wisdom for creativity, wisdom for family peace, wisdom course volume one, wisdom course volume two, wisdom to see ahead, winning with ease and the winning mentality. Help your children possess the right knowledge of godliness and excellence in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation by visiting the Wisdom Bank today or call the number as displayed. The knowledge of God's word puts you in command over all things. Salvation World of Life Bible Institute presents our first session of the International Basic Certificate Course for the month of May 2024. 
basic certificate course will be both live and online for countries with GMT plus one or minus one time zones to participate. Nigeria in close save. Pastors hosting Bible school should please announce at their branches. School begins on Monday, 6th and ends Friday, 17th of May, 2024. Please note, school fee scholarship is available for students who cannot afford it. For registration, visit wobi.smhos.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. To commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offering, send your seed to the account as displayed. Okma International Academy in Fan Junior and College announces admission into pre-kindergarten primary 1 to 5 and year 7 GSS 1 for 2024-2025 academic session. Applicants are to fill and submit an online application form at okma.org.ng. Note, applicants for the college must be 10 years by September 2024. For entrance examination, dates, venues and order details, please visit okma.org.ng or call any of the numbers as displayed. Those are desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. There will be service group prayers on Friday, 26th of April, 2024, for children, ministry, peacekeepers, and foreign language units at the King Marina for those at the global headquarters at 5 p.m. All concerned should fast before coming. Water baptism hosts immediately after this service, while live foundation class for new converts and believers hosts tomorrow Monday by 5 p.m. and on Saturday by 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. respectively at the global headquarters and all our branches globally. The class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure. Please come with your writing materials. Pregnant and expectant models meeting hosts on Wednesday, 24th of April, 2024 at the global headquarters by 5 p.m. In preparation for Mother's Day Celebration 2024, women at the Global Headquarters will meet immediately after the fourth service at the main auditorium. To receive daily prayers, prophecies and wisdom quotes for living, like, share and follow David Ibiomie on Facebook, at David Ibiomie on Instagram, at David underscore Ibiomie, X at David Ibiomie. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Benibo Ibim. I'm here to testify the goodness of God upon my life. I was favored into the instruction, obedience to the instruction of the servant of God, David Ibiomie, who said we should go out for the vision one soul, one week a soul. I obeyed his instruction. I went out for soul winning. After that, I was surprisingly favored financially. My one year my, um, uh, my first semester one-year uh, one diploma course was cleared off by a source that I never expected. I'm here to say, God, thank you. Your name and your testimony. Praise God. My name is Ayana Imano. I joined this Great Commission 2016. By the grace of God, I've been serving God in my service units faithfully. Basically, God has been wonderful to me all these years. I'm here to give God all the glory. Today, I'm 30 years younger. I've come to return all the glory to God. The name and their testimony. My name is Godwin Uchewo. My testimony is on healing. Plus, minus over two months, I've been having serious pain here. And the comfort comes in swelling of uh, liquid, even eating, even sleeping in the night, I have to double my pillow to sleep. To the glory of God, last Sunday during the fourth service, I sat at this right wing. When the servant of God came to summarize, he called for somebody with pain, I came out. He ministered on me. Since then, he did. Every pain, every discomfort vanished. I am here to give God the glory. The same God is here to give your own testimonies. Rise to your feet, return the glory back to him.
Appreciate we give you the glory. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified in Jesus' mighty name. May please be seated for a moment. This section we're going to God in prayers for the church. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. In Psalm 138, verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. We will pray by the blood of Jesus Christ to nullify all arrangements of Satan to attack our services or streaming equipment. You decree peace and aura and perfection. Stand to your feet. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. We will bind the devil clear farm from any position he has taken or intend to take to attack ourselves today, to attack our stream equipment. We will bind the devil with clear farm. All your devices, all your aunties, to corrupt the civil services. The blood of Jesus against you, that will keep him in perfect peace. Who smite the state on team will decree perfect peace or run perfection in all our sins today. Our stream equipment in Jesus' mighty name. Him. In Psalm 63, verse 9, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. You will decree God's wrath on anyone that wants to attack any journey worshiper coming, staying, and returning from our services today. You will pray for our preservation and safety. Raise the first name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For thou shalt decree it in, and it shall be established unto thee. We will decree God's wrath on anyone thinking, plan to attack. All coming and returning from ourselves today with any form of evil, emergency, tension, crisis, will burn the devil clear for no way performed against such a prosper, any weapon in the pit of hell, program against us, the blood of Jesus against you, we decree all our protection, all our preservation over all that will cause their return in Jesus' mighty name. Is the faithful God give him thanks? Father, we thank you, we appreciate you, we give you the glory in Jesus' mighty name. You may please be seated. Testimonies give credence to God's presence in salvation ministries. Let's welcome the officials as they read our online testimonies from our branches across the globe. Salvation Ministries Church, Badere Church, Adria, Lagos State, Nigeria, from Ezine Nadi. My 13 weeks old nephew had difficulty breathing at night. He was immediately taken to the hospital the next morning and he was diagnosed with pneumonia. That's an infection of the lungs. He was also said to have sepsis with meningitis and suspected kidney injury. Sepsis is overwhelming infection affecting multiple organs in the body. Meningitis is when it has crossed uh, to the brain affecting the covering of the brain. This will manifest with uh, convulsion in children and coma, as you can see in that photo on the top right corner. I attended day two of the April 2024 week of spiritual empowerment. I had God's servant share a testimony in healing of a pastor's son who was sick to the point of death during glory reign 2024. I was moved by this testimony and I decided to do what the pastor did by writing my prayer request on a sheet of paper 16 times and prayed about it. Miraculously, my nephew said improved significantly by the next evening. All the tests were repeated and they came out normal. He has seen been discharged from the hospital and doing fine. I give God all the glory. Salvation Ministries Church, 19 Ogui Road, 
Enugu State, Nigeria, from Uche and Goodness. In 2023, I was not paying my tithe faithfully, and this led to stagnation and frustration in my life. In November 2023, following the teachings of God's servant, I decided to become faithful with my tithing, and suddenly the Holy Spirit gave me a business idea that made me level up financially. In January 2024, I was quickened to increase my tithe by 20%, and from January to today, I've been experiencing a common increase in my business, ceaseless business breakthroughs, and financial stability. Indeed, it is good to be faithful and obedient in tithing. Salvation Ministries, Church Number 81 at Samunu Street, Calabar, Cross River State, Nigeria, from Omuzoafo, Deborah. I had severe abdominal pain that persisted for a while. On the 20th of March 2024, I went to the hospital, and after a series of tests, I was diagnosed with appendicitis, that's inflammation of the appendix. It became a concern to me and my family due to financial difficulties. My brother introduced me to the online morning devotion on the 21st of March 2024, I received the prophetic declarations of God's servant that day on healing in faith. I also followed up on subsequent ministrations. On the 11th of April, 2024, I went to that same hospital and did a repeat scan. To the glory of God, the scan result revealed no trace of inflamed or ruptured appendix. My abdominal parts were normal and healthy. A doctor who attended to me was in awe. Truly, God is in salvation ministries. To him, I give all the glory. Testimony from Ogan Chukuka Yeridrichi. For the past five years, I had load back pain. During the online special miracle and healing service on the 12th of April, 2024, God's servant mentioned my case, and I believed it in faith. And immediately, I got healed. Indeed, God confirms the words of his servant. If you're next to testify, stand to your feet and give God the glory. This morning, lift my hands to heaven. Magnify, <clears throat> magnify the King of all kings and glorify his name forever. Let's give him praise and glory. No one is like him forever is on the throne. He is worthy to be exalted and worthy to be glorified. Blessed be his name forever. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus was teaching. And one was very busy with many matters. And her name happened to be Martha. And Mary sat to hear the word. And Jesus said, one thing is needful. When you get the word of God, your knees are bound to be met. The one thing needful is the word that brings you to a point where all your needs will be met. Lord, the thing needful for me to enjoy the best in my family, open my eyes to see it. To be full of activities without productivity is to end in captivity. Lord, I desire your word. The word that will change my life forever. That will make me enjoy the best of progress as a family. Lord, open my eyes to encounter that word. Go ahead and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Pray for an encounter of the word. I desire an encounter with your word. In this first service, I want to be out of every captivity. Are you praying that prayer in the name of Jesus? I desire an encounter with your word. Open my understanding. Let my eyes be open to the truth. For a change of story. In Jesus most wonderful name. Somebody will have an encounter with God's word. That will change your life forever. Yeah. That challenge in your life. Will end with testimonies. Yeah. Because this service will terminate every frustration. In your family. Yeah. That family has been stagnated. Frustrated. Battered. Shattered. You will leave this service with testimonies. Yeah. Every member of that family will end with laughter. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Here we are, lifting our hands to
kings to glorify them forever open your mouth and worship him there's no like him forever is on the throne we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you all adoration blessed be your name forever in the precious name of jesus christ in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth darkness came to corrupt but the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters everywhere darkness has come to corrupt your destiny i command it out of your life I decree this week, glory of God be revealed upon you. Yeah. Upon that consigns you. Yeah. You will be single out this week for favor. Yeah. His glory will make a difference in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That you're part of this first service, whether in church or online, I decree wherever you go this week, you'll come out first. Yeah. The Lord will bless you in all ramification. Yeah. And no devil can stop you from making progress. In the precious name of Jesus. As I've declared it, so shall it be to someone who says amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us to your word. Open our hearts to have revelation of the truth. Give an understanding by the Holy Spirit. That no one will live here without understanding. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Let somebody who knows you already have a testimony say. Amen. And to every sick I pronounce you healed in the name of Jesus. Give me a big hand. You maybe see that? Glory to God.
Every one of you that wants souls, may the Lord reward you special. Wisdom for family progress part one. I want the ears to be open because it's not going to be a conventional service. It's going to be very unconventional. When we talk about family, family is a lineage. What you call lineage. You see, in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 1, you see, and this began, this, this began, this began, this, that means they are trying to trace their lineage. A family is a group of individuals living together under one roof, usually under one head. I say, family is a group of individuals living together under one roof, usually under one head. Family is divinely created as a result of marriage between male and female who become parents and produce or adopt children who are committed to produce same values, character, etc. through love, discipline, and by examples. If you don't get it, get the message. You can't get everything. Just know. Amen. As a family is divinely, is divinely created as a result of marriage. As a result of what? So there cannot be family without marriage. Between male and female, not between male and male, between male and female. Who became parents and produce or adopt children. Who are committed to produce same values, character, etc. Through love, discipline, and by examples. In Proverbs chapter 24, 3 and 4, please everybody take, this is the foundation of today's teaching. Nobody should just copy. Look at the foundation. That's where the whole teaching is taken from. Proverbs 24, it says, through wisdom is an house. What? Shall we do together? One to go. Through wisdom is an house builded. And by standing, it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Shout hallelujah. Three words stand out in those two verses. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. But we are going to put them in sequence. Knowledge has to come. Understanding has to come. Wisdom be the last. Is that true? It's a true wisdom. It's a house worth. He said wisdom is what builds a house, not through kissing. Kissing does not build a house. I love you does not build a house. It's a true wisdom. Through what? Hey baby, I love you does not build a house. He said wisdom builds the house. And if you look at those scriptures, the things mentioned there, there's no kiss. Is there any kiss there? Is there any sex there? I don't mean in marriage, sex is not important, but it's not mentioned there. So those are not the foundations. Those are not the what? Oh, I, I want to leave him because he doesn't have my time. That's not the foundation. These three things are the foundation for your family. Now hear this. These three things are needed for any marriage, any home or house, any family to make outstanding progress. These three things must be in place. If these three things are not in place, no family, no home, no marriage will last. These three. He said, the NIV, bring the NIV, let me read the NIV and see. Of that same scripture. He said, by wisdom a house is built. And through understanding what? It is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. These three things are needed. They are what? For any family, married, home, or house to make outstanding progress. We'll take them in sequence. The first is knowledge. Knowledge what? The first thing is knowledge. If your family must be built, knowledge must be in place. Knowledge is the same thing as information. Same thing as what? Please, listen. The undoing of families and marriages and homes is ignorance. Is what? Ignorance. The greatest undoing of any family is ignorance. My people are destroyed. For lack of what? 
not the devil. The devil is not the reason why your family is going through those problems. It's ignorance. So you must pursue knowledge. You must pursue what? You must pursue, it, knowledge is not a gift. We have the word of knowledge, but knowledge is not a gift. You pursue it. You must buy books and read them. Not just books, they write books because not every author you should read this book. Are you getting me, sir? When you expand your knowledge, you expand your success level in the family. Knowledge of the truth is what gives anyone enthronement in life. Changes in life will be proportionate to your level of what? Knowledge. The problem is simple. People go into marriage that they have no knowledge of. Did you hear me at all? Listen carefully. You are going into a marriage, but you have no knowledge of marriage. If you notice in your career, because you spent so many years, your career, do you know career lasts longer than marriage is today? Hope you know. You know why? Because the people have knowledge of their career. So they last long in their career. In the western world, not this part of the world, before you drive, before you enter the road to drive, they will tell you to come for lectures. You take lectures. They give you a manual to read about driving on their roads. Then they will give you a test. And then after the test, they will say, you are not qualified. Or you are qualified before they give you a license. So they know because they feel that if you enter the road and you are not qualified to drive, it's dangerous. So they take you through a process. So when somebody gets a license, he does not play with his license because he has acquired relevant knowledge to know how to handle the steering. So the car of the people lasts longer than their marriages. Because when they go to marry, they just say, you want to marry? They sign the paper and give a certificate. No lectures, no information. So the last languages don't last. Are you getting me? Your success in any field will be proportionate to the level of knowledge you have. So Solomon here said, before you think of building your family, go for what? Knowledge. Go for what? Knowledge. That you're a pastor does not mean you know marriage. You have to acquire knowledge in that area. Shout hallelujah. He said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Truth means original information. That is the meaning of truth. The second word we saw there is understanding. What is it? From that scripture. Is that true? Understanding, number two, is the ability to interpret life as God sees it. That's what understanding means. Understanding is to see through God's eyes. That you are in church does not mean, you are in class does not mean you understand the subject. Have you not gone to class where they taught you? You say, I know about the teacher, but you do understand. True? Am I talking? I mean, if you went to school, you don't understand even the subject, so you have F. So it's not enough to know. You must understand what you know. Do you understand, Mr. I said, understand is to see through God's eyes. He said, the entrance of the word, give it what? Give it, right, and give it understanding to the simple. Psalm 1 verse 130. So, the word of God has to enter, not just hear it. Is that true? You don't just hear the word of God. You have to what? Understand what you hear for you to produce. Shout out. And today, the word of God you're hearing will produce your life. Shout a better amen. amen. So you hear through his ears. You feel with his heart. That's God's heart. You walk in his steps. That's what we mean understanding. You're hearing the way God is speaking. You're thinking the way God 
thinks, the heart, his steps. He say, if God was to be in this position, is it the step we'll take? You think like him? You see things with understanding. If we see things with understanding, as God sees them, there will be no crisis in families. Understanding simply means comprehension. It simply means what? That's what understanding means. That means I can comprehend this issue. This is how God is, which is what God is saying. And I pray this day that you have understanding in the name of Jesus. The third is what? If you are following me, so there are three things there. What is the third one? Wisdom number three. Wisdom, it means the application of the truth. That is application of the original information, which is the word of God. Wisdom is the principal thing with all you are getting. God what? Wisdom proves for seven. Knowing something is not enough. Application of what you know is more important. And that is what we call wisdom. Now, let me tell you practically. For instance, a medical doctor knows that smoking is dangerous. True? Yet he smokes. Is he a wise man? No. So that you know scripture does not mean you're wise. The doctor tells you smoking is dangerous, yet he cigarette with his mouth. That means he's not wise. Are you getting me? That you know scripture does not mean your family will make progress or there will be peace in your marriage if you don't apply what you know. Wisdom is the application of the truth. I mean, understand me. Glory to God. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Shout hallelujah. He said, that you're in this sense of mind and what? Do with them, not in the instance of mine, and copy them or quote them. Matthew 7 24. You see, the instance of mine, and do it, it's like you know, the what? A wise man. The wind came. The, so, two of us have the same problem. Two of you have the same problem. One did not fall. Matthew 7 24 27. So, the thing that's making you to divorce, somebody has walked out of it by knowledge. By what? An application of the truth. The thing that's making you to say, no, I will never see this marriage, somebody has laughed over it and walked out of it. Based on what two of you understand. It's right here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So you build a family on these three things and not on social media standards of kissing, etc. Now listen carefully, people of God. When you want to buy a product of any kind, you will see that the manual is at the top. Have you experienced that? Have you noticed that? Any product you buy, the manual is always up. True? And they will tell you, read this manual before you operate this gadget. Is that true? The manual is the instruction of the manufacturer. Are you getting me, sir? It said, read this manual. Don't operate this electronics without reading this what? Manual. Now, God is simply saying to you, It is the originator of marriage. It's the manufacturer. Who is the manufacturer? God. So he's saying, before you go into marriage, before you go to establish your family, read this manual. Find out what he's saying about the product, marriage and family. How many get me? Now, if you buy electronics without reading the manual, it will amount to foolishness if you get angry when you cannot operate it. You are very angry. You can't operate it. And you are angry. I can't operate this thing. It is just as foolish to try to operate marriage. Family without reading his proper manual, the Bible. The problem with many couples is that they push God aside yet expect to enjoy the benefits of marriage and family. They ignore the word of God, which is the manufacturer's manual. Which is the manufacturer's what? And expect the product, marriage, to function proper, perfectly. <laughs> we say, it can't work like that. Do you understand me? They want the marriage to work. They want the family to work. Yet they are pushing aside the what? The word of God with the manufacturer's manual. That marriage will not work. It's impossible. In Psalm 11, verse 3, it said, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The foundation for any marriage, for any family, is the word of God. Is what? The word of God. Once the word of God is given 
is right place in the home. It will build solid foundation that will last. Let me say this. Anything outside the original manual is an opinion. Anything you're on social media, anything anybody tells you is opinion is not the truth. Hey, there's a man who married and he said on social media, it's opinion, it's not the truth. The truth can only come from the manufacturer of the product, which is God. Are you getting me, sir? Whatever anybody says is what? An opinion, but not the truth. I read, I saw a man who spoke on social media. That's opinion. That's not the truth. We are God's products. We are God's what? We must find out the truth about his product. Let me say this to every one of us. The family is the first and oldest institution on earth. That was the first institution established by God. It is God's idea. The family is the solution to all the ills of the society. So once a family crashes, it affects the society. Very important, let me say this to all of us. You and I belong to a kingdom. We belong to what? And we belong to the kingdom of God. Is that true? And every kingdom has a king. The king gives instruction. The citizens take and apply the instruction. That's why they call it the kingdom. And God is the king of kings. So he gives you and I instructions. He gives us what? And then we obey his instruction. Then we enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now hear this. We are citizens of heaven. Our kingdom is ruled by laws and we must submit to those laws. In every kingdom, listen, they call a place called United Kingdom, UK. They have rules. They have what? They have laws and rules. In United Kingdom, you drive on the left. Your car has to be on the left, very odd. The steering has to be on the right. That is the United Kingdom. They, they have a king called Charles. True? And they have a kingdom which they have laws that govern that kingdom. If you go to that kingdom of United Kingdom, say, I'm from Nigeria. In my country, we drive on the right. Is that true? Is it left or right? Left, right hand. Right hand drive. The cell is on the left. So Nigeria will drive the cell on the right and the right hand. We drive on the right. In Nigeria, we drive on what? The right. In UK, you drive what? On the left. He said, I don't believe in these laws. You drive on the you have headlong, you have accident. Because you are against the law of United Kingdom. The laws of the world are not the laws of his kingdom. If you try to apply the laws of this world in the kingdom of God, you crash. That's what marriages are crashing. Because they are trying to borrow earthly laws to reign in the kingdom of God. So they contradict each other. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, it said, for hours, the New King James Version, let's read the New King James Version, the King James Version, but New King James, let's read together, want to go. For our citizenship, read together, I want to go. For our citizenship is what? Do you hear that? Where's your citizenship? Uh, your citizen where? So as kingdom citizens, we are to live by heaven standards. Our laws are not earthly. Our laws are not what? As citizens of heaven, we are to live by higher values. Higher cultural morals and higher cultural standards. We are not to live by the standards of the world. We are to live by the standards of where we are coming from. Is that clear? Glory to God. Am I making sense? We are not from the earth. We are heavenly citizens on the earth. Hello. Jesus speaking made a statement. 
He said, even if you see me here, I'm not from here. <laughs> I ain't come from heaven. This is what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm not a citizen of this earth. When you are born again, you are no longer a citizen of the earth. You are a citizen of what? Heaven. So the way you live your life must be different from the way the people of the world live. Hello. Because the laws of this earth are not the same as the laws of heaven. So here. Now Jesus made a statement. He said, when you pray, say, our Father, which are in what? Hallowed be thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as well. It's a prayer for heaven to come to the earth. Now listen. (laughs) Children of God, hear this. Listen carefully. We are to bring heaven's culture to the earth, not to borrow earth's culture to influence us. I come again. We are to bring heaven's what? Culture, heaven's lifestyle, heaven's values to the earth. But today the church is taking it that way around. We are the ones to bring our culture to influence the earth. But we are now borrowing the earthly culture to influence the church. Now you may not understand what I'm saying. That's why there are so much problems in marriages. The society is supposed to learn from us and not we from them. We are to redirect, restructure, rediscover the truth for the society. The society should look at us and say, this is how marriage should be. But today we are not trying to learn how marriage should be from them. Do you understand how it is now? He it, it said, thy will be done on earth as well. He said, this is my blueprint for marriage, the Bible. So bring the Bible to the earth. Let people see how church people marry. But we are not seeing how the world marry to the church. So there's a conflict. I mean, understand what I'm saying. He said, this is how church people marry. In marriage and in families, the people of God, this is how they live. So we are to redirect, rediscover, restructure everything back and put it in line. I said, look, what the people, this is how you should be. So they have to look at our families and see how we raise children. I said, this is how it's good to raise children. They look at us and say, this is how it is good to marry. This is how it is good to live. Do you understand me? Not we looking up to them. They're looking up to us. I pray every faulty foundation of your heart, God will redirect you in the name of Jesus. Shout a better hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of the family? Because if purpose is not known, abuse is what? Inevitable. A. The family is to secure the society. The family is to secure what? B, the family is to bring sanctity to the society. C, the family is to give values and morals to the society. Every destruction of the family is a destruction to the society. Once families begin to crack, it affects society. Every moral decadence, psychological, social, and emotional problem can be traced back to the family. Once you fix the family, all social problems can be fixed. Once families are intact, all social problems can be what? Fixed. Check any society where families are in place, crime rate is very low. Have you noticed? Anywhere crime is low, evil is low. Families are intact. Can you train your child not to steal and tomorrow he becomes an arm robber? Any disjointed society is of disjointed what? Families. And I'm going to share with you fundamental truths about the family. Fundamental what? Truths about the family. Roman figure one. 
It is where children are raised and not school or state institutions like juvenile centers. I say it is where children are what? Raised and not school or state institutions like juvenile centers. This things you know that children are to be raised where? In the family, not in school. Many have abandoned their responsibilities. Where are children to be raised? Where are children supposed to be raised? No, don't abandon the reason of your children to school. Not to state. Do you know there are children they send state in, our, in the overseas, even here, state take over some children when parents can't perform. The child is taken over by the state. Just imagine state now turning up your children. That is the disaster. That is the what? They are overseas where husband and wife have problems, the state will take over the child and start training the child. What would they give the child? So, parents must accept what? Responsibility to raise up our children. Are you getting me with values? Romans figure 2. Every society is a true reflection of the family. Every society is a true reflection of what? A family. It's a prototype of society. Family is a prototype of society. Another truth about the family is number three, Roman figure three, I, I, I. The sanctity of the family is the bedrock for human survival and security. The sanctity of the family is the bedrock for human survival and what? Security. And I'll start with number four for this service. Next service, I'll take the rest. Do I take number four? Very important. Roman figure four, one V. IV. The family is a place for preservation of godly generational values. The family is a place for preservation of godly generational what? Values. I will repeat this one in the next sentence because we have to pray. In Psalm 78, 2 to 7, look at it. Psalm 78, I will teach this one, I will repeat it again. Psalm 78, 2 to 7. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Do you hear that? Which we have heard and known. And our fathers are what? Told us. You read verse 4 because we should be together. That, you read all? You are sure? Read that's it. Verse 4. You read all? Where's verse 4 now? My friends to do. Are you okay? Where you read? I said to seven now, what is there? For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. You read the next verse. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Shout hallelujah. So, the family of God's system is to transfer values. To transfer what? Our duty is to transfer what? Values. Now, for instance, two males or females cannot produce righteous seed. Your children should know. The kingdom of God forbids it. That you wear earrings, change your looks, does not make a man or woman. Ask me why. Who is a woman? A woman is simply a man with a womb. If you like, have breasts. Have everything. You don't have a womb. So you are not a woman, you are a man. If you like, change your look, have breasts. As the one that jail. You does not make you a woman. You are what? A man. Because you don't have a womb. Tell your children, 
look, it's not correct, it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. My child, that is not who you are. They teach them in school, so you have to educate them. You tell them, my son, this is not correct, it's not scriptural, it's not right. Male and female created he them, not male and male. A woman is simply a man with a womb. That's why no matter they train themselves, they cannot have children. They don't have fetus. They can't produce. It's an, it's an abnormality for two men to have a child in the house. The child is already grown up in a mad state. Two men to have a child. So you give them values. You give them what? But what is that they teach them in the class? They say it doesn't matter. Man and man can marry. They teach them. Woman and woman can count. Man and man can't marry. It's not the Bible. Male and female created he them. So you must give children values. You must give them what? That the word of God does not permit man and man. Do you know even pastor says it doesn't mean that gay is wrong. It's wrong. Our kingdom does not accept it. It's accepted in religion. But not accepted in the kingdom of God. Religion permits man and man. Jesus did not come to establish a religion. He came to establish the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, man and man does not marry. Woman and woman does not marry. It's male and female that marries. You let your children know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the next service, I'll teach you how you teach your children sex education. You, they must be educated first in the home before they're educated outside. Don't hide it from them. Tell them, young girl, when you get to an age, you see blood. This is what it means. When your breasts start coming out, let nobody touch you at this part of your body. You're a mother. You must tell the girl. Boy, when a girl begins to tell you, come, don't go. <laughs> don't laugh. You tell the boy, you must make sure you marry before you sleep with her. Don't say, <laughs> they will teach them the wrong thing. No child is left neutral these days. Either you educate them with the word of God or they'll be uneducated to do the wrong things. So you better educate them from home. Are you getting me? There's no way you marry a sinner. The Bible says, do not be with all believers. So when you want to marry, she must be born again. You don't say, any girl, I will take. No. You tell your son, that is what they mean by sex. sex education is not to sleep. That's not the meaning. It's to tell them what is right and what is wrong. If you don't teach them, they will teach them the wrong things. Mm? Avoid children so they will not be miseducated. Well, I think I'll teach them in the next service. Let me stop here. Are you blessed today? So what have I said in summary? You must have knowledge. Don't go into marriage until you have what? We change our marriage counseling from three months to six months. I'm thinking of making it nine months. Ask me why. People don't leave their career because they have enough information. Three months we discover that we was having too many problems in our marriages. People don't know even why they are married. They just say, I like, I love you. Do you love me? Yes. But I want to divorce. So love is not enough. You don't have knowledge. You don't have what? Yet you went into something you don't have knowledge about. He said, do you love him? Of course, I love him, but I don't want to stay again. This guy is, 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 is mean. He's is, is a brute. Two of you don't have worth. Knowledge. You entered into it. Something you know so much about, it's difficult for you to leave it. Nobody leaves his career because of challenges. True? Have you ever said, I'm not going to be in my career because there are challenges? You stayed there because the knowledge you have was too much, and it took you years. Then yet, marriage, which is a lifetime journey, no knowledge. No what? People, if you don't understand why they marry, say, I just have to marry because, you know, I feel lonely. Is that why you marry? You feel lonely. So the day there will be no loneliness, you will divorce. You feel what? I just feel I should be sleeping with somebody, you know. I can't be staying. That's what you want. You'll be tired. So why are you getting into marriage? You must know. And you must understand. Why should I have a family? You must understand. Then you now apply what you know. That is where the family can be in stability. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah.
Shout a big hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Hmm? I will teach in the second service. No, no service will I teach the same thing. I'm teaching different things in all service. Very loaded. Very what? Please get the whole messages. Everybody you know, give them this message. Give them this what? Of today. It's, it's a summary of a stable family. We are going to pray in this first service. Very fast prayers. It was a time. We are pray, going to pray to destroy every satanic force that causes conflicts in your family and corrupt your progress. You pray that continuous peace is on the screen. Should they have given you the prayer points, so please them on the screen. You pray. Okay, is there? Okay. In Matthew 15, 30, say, and the answer said, every tree which my father, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. He said, behold, how good an apple is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 1, 3, verse 1. So you pray to destroy every satanic force that causes conflict in your family and corrupt your progress. Look at the prayer point on the screen. It's not there. Oh, yeah. You two, you're educated. Look at the prayer point. Pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. You have the second prayer point. You are going to angrily cause the spirit of disobedience. Spirit of what? To biblical laws of marital success in your life or that of your spouse. That may lead to separation or divorce. Pray for the grace to always remain obedient to God's laws for marital success. Ephesians 2 2. It said that the spirit of what? It said, We are in time past, they walked according to the cause of this world, according to the spirit part of the prince of the power of the air. The spirit of what? Spirit that now working the children of what disobey. There's a spirit that makes you to disobey. You say that spirit must go out of your life. First Second Corinthians 12, verse 9, and he said to them, My grace is sufficient for thee. Every spirit of what disobedience that makes me to walk against the truth. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In my studies, I saw something in Psalm 68, verse 6, the NIV, the A path. How many of you want to marry? You'll be surprised with that scripture. Everybody wants to marry and get married. It said, God says the lonely in families. That means God does not want anybody to be lonely. Do you understand what God is saying? He says, he says the lonely in what? Families. That means for every single person who is alone, God wants you to have a family. That's the word of God. Do you understand now? So I decree in my office, everyone that desires to have a family today, that you are lonely, you're on your own. But he said, Lord, I wish I have a husband, I wish I have a wife. Now in the name of Jesus, every single person that desires marriage, I command God, give your own family in the name of Jesus. I decree with authority your family be found in the name of Jesus. 
Your husband, your wife, you're looking for that is meant for you. We see you as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. You will not be lonely anymore in the name of Jesus. Our children and grandchildren, we desire to marry, they'll get married. Because that is the world. God says the lonely world in families. Now, look at your family and your family will see you in the name of Jesus. And those who desire to marry or they want children to marry, say, I will get my own family. Say prophetically. Give it time before this year is over. In the testimonies, I'll get my family. Give it time and pray. All my children, if you have children, pray for them. You have grandchildren, pray for them. You have a sister, a brother, pray for the person. In the name of Jesus, my sister must find her husband. My brother will find his own wife. Pray for your children, pray for your brother, pray for yourself. I will get my own family before this year is over. Prophesy it. Declare it. Believe it. Are you praying? In Jesus' mighty name. So all we have said is, know it. What did he say? Know about family. Know about what? Don't assume. Know about marriage and family. Then understand what marriage is. And what family is. And then apply what you understand. There will be no crisis. If there's crisis, you don't know it. If you say you know it, you don't understand it. If you say you understand it, you are not applying it. If these three things are in place, your family will be successful. Your marriage will be successful. So the, what does it, where does it start from? Knowledge. So go and get materials. Go and get what? In the third service, I'm going to teach you very deep teaching. You can't go to a psychologist who has married three times and divorced and remarried for, for counseling. You know, it can't work like that. It can't work. You go to these days, you go to social media uh, counselors. You don't know the background of the person. You don't know how the person is. On social media, you're taking counsel. You're a mad person. Doesn't work like that. Go to the word of God. The answer is here. Yeah. So go and get books. You went to school, you read books, you bought books. Now you want to marry. No book. Please don't read every book. Oh. Don't read every book on marriage. Read from people that have half proofs. Do you understand now? Don't just pick book on the shelf. Not every junk. You read. You'll be selective in the books you read. Somebody who beats his wife, why are you going to read this book? He will tell you there's nothing wrong in beating her. After you finish beating her, you can also tell her no problem. Because by beating, she will learn how to be saucy. No. So... <laughs> There's, we don't see anything wrong between a woman. I think you know. So we have to know the books we read. But if you are not born again, you must come into the family of God. In case your family lineage was disrupted, now you have a new family of Jesus Christ. Come into that family and start afresh. How do you come to the family? You must be born again. By accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayer, keep standing, others take your seats. Please, I thank you, everyone standing in all our churches. If this is your first time to fellowship with us, kindly stand and want to welcome you. This is your first time. You're welcome to Salvation Ministries, the home of success. Everyone who has come today for the first time on behalf of the head of the church, Jesus, I want to welcome you to this family of God. Your life will never remain the same. You are blessed and highly favored. Keep coming and God will keep blessing you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You want me to take off? Man? Please attend to them. I ask you to invite families. Do you know it's better to bring them for counseling like this than to settle problems? Settling problems, three years you are not through. Let them hear themselves. You save many families of, of crisis. Is that not true? 
Please invite families even for the remaining services. Instead of settling crisis, it's better they hear the word of God. Now, I'm going to teach in the fourth service on family finance. Family what? It's part of my teaching. So this today is loaded. Very, I'm not repeating anything twice. It's, it's too loaded. In fact, I'm thinking of how I'll be able to cover all. No family can prosper without giving. If you have all the principles without giving, they will have peace without money. And most of the quarrels is this thing. Most of the shouting is this thing. Most of the brutality why you slap your wife is when she asks you for money. Now, not to slap her and not to be shouting over your children who are innocent. Package your tight. Package the quality offering. As long as this eight minutes, seed time and affairs shall not cease. No prayer time. Family peace without prosperity. They are still come inside. You want money? You must give money. So package your quality offering. Your family must come out of the curse of poverty. The way Noah did. So package the offering for your family. For your what? Pack it an offering for your, on behalf of your family. I say, Lord, enough. We can't be struggling to eat. Pack it your quality offering on behalf of your family. Raise it up to heaven and say, Father, I'm giving this seed as a point of contact for my family. And for my pray over it in the name of Jesus. May the offering your hand today change your position for life and change your financial status in Jesus' mighty name. Drop your offering. You can sing for two minutes and I come to close. Sunday, pastor from Kaduna testified. I was talking to pastors and he asked me a question among the pastors. He said, he has divorced already. What will you do now? I didn't pray for him. I didn't pray for him and his wife. I just packed materials and gave to him. I said, go and listen to these materials. Eat them. 
you get the answer. And he testified on Sunday. He said, I didn't pray for them. I didn't cast out any demon and two of them are back. <laughs> Knowledge is the secret for sustainability. You have gone for deliverance. You will be delivered. You have gone for prayers. It doesn't work like that. He didn't say shall pray. He said shall know the truth. Shall what? We have this pack. It's all the books. It's in a pack. You can't have chemistry carry over reading biology. <laughs> Get, don't say it. It's a lifetime journey. It's a lifetime what? This is for life. It's not for temporary. It's not for three years. Even your career you retire. In marriage you don't retire. So why not acquire enough knowledge? Get the whole materials. Eat them. Before you've gone in. In case you have gone in and you don't even understand it, go back to it. Don't say, I've been married for 50 years. There's no 50 years experience. You know it or you don't know it. Do you, they don't give you a certificate because you are old. If you fail, why egg? When you get to 80, they'll give you a certificate. You fail. Since marriage has not worked, go and read on how to make it work. These were the materials I gave to him. I just gave him this. I said, take this young man. I didn't play lay hands or I didn't pray for him. I said, great, go and listen to them. And then the, the wife and him restored without one prayer. Without what? Without, I didn't even cancel him. I just said, take this book. This is all you need, pastor. I'm giving the same things to you. They say, I, I, I know too much. I, 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 know, I know too much. Knowledge is never enough. We keep learning. We keep what? Tuesday's home sale. So get, go, go, go to the bookstore. Because the major challenge is family. It's family. So this is not only marriage. Marriage and what? Family. It's family city. So your family, your children, some of you, the way your children trouble you, you don't even know how to talk to them. You don't know how to bring the child back to you with love. You scream on the child, the child is running away from you. So find out how to make that child come back home. Through? Get knowledge. Get what? No, you're already almost losing your child. You are still laughing. The boy is a whole boy now is planting hair like a Rastafarian. He said, hey, hey. now these days, boys, now, your own son is not looking like Bob Marley. Please find out how you can make the boy cut his hair without you talking. Is that clear? Thursday is living error free. Living what? Tuesday. Tuesday is already home fellowship. Last week there was food. Is it not last week there was food? Plenty things. So you see if you went last week, please go this week home. <laughs> Sunday is special anointing service. been the last Sunday. <laughs> Operation one week. And so, the anointing service will come with your oil on Sunday. Is that through? And then make sure you keep winning. In fact, you can see the message is not normal. Go and win soul for this remaining service. Lift your hands to heaven. With what you have heard today, may peace begin to reign in your family. Yeah. All every family going through storm, temptation, crisis, there shall be peace. Yeah. Every broken home is mended. Yeah. Go! This week, God will single you out for favor. Yeah. You are blessed. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. The grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ love of God, sweet flow of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace.
Hallelujah. You're all welcome to the second service in the mighty name of Jesus. I know you've been blessed with testimonies for those who are the global headquarters. Please go to the success door. Pastors and officials are there to document your testimonies. The word of God declares in Proverbs 2 verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You appreciate the Lord for your encounter with his word in this service that will grant you wisdom for family progress. Raise your voice and appreciate the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you glory and praise. We thank you for your encounter with your word in this service that will cause everyone to enjoy wisdom that will bring about family progress on all sides. Take all the glory and honor, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord is faithful, giving glory and praise. Lift up your voice and worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. We deserve our worship, Father. We
of God. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' most wonderful name. 
May please be seated in God's presence. Papa said in his book, The Blessed Family, he said, The family cannot succeed if you leave out the one who started it in the beginning, which is God. It's testimony time. Put your hands together for Jesus as we invite Harry Eromosele for his testimony. Why he comes, please pay careful attention to the full information. A very warm welcome to this awesome service. Visit the Knowledge Center or e-store at smhos4.com immediately after the fourth service to obtain today's message and all the messages in hard copy and flash drive. Or subscribe to our only collections on MP3 and DVD. Amongst the materials our message, April 2024, Week of Spiritual Empowerment, Praise for Greater Exploits, Glory in 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books, The Wonders of Wisdom, Wisdom for Creativity, Wisdom for Family Peace, Wisdom Quotes Volume 1, Wisdom Quotes Volume 2, Wisdom to See Ahead, Winning with Ease, and The Winning Mentality. Help your children possess the right knowledge of godliness and excellence in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation by visiting the Wisdom Bank today or call the number as displayed. The knowledge of God's word puts you in command over all things. Salvation World of Life Bible Institute presents our first session of the International Basic Certificate Course for the month of May 2024. Basic Certificate Course will be both live and online for countries with GMT plus one or minus one time zones to participate. Nigeria in close save. Pastors hosting Bible School should please announce at their branches. School begins on Monday, 6th and ends Friday, 17th of May, 2024. Please note, school fee scholarship is available for students who cannot afford it. For registration, visit wobi.smhos.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. To commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offering, send your seed to the account as displayed. Oakma International Academy Infant Junior and College announces admission into pre-kindergarten primary 1 to 5 and year 7 GSS 1 for 2024-2025 academic session. Applicants are to fill and submit an online application form at okma.org.ng. Note, applicants for the college must be 10 years by September 2024. For entrance examination dates, venues, and all the details, please visit okma.org.ng or call any of the numbers as displayed. Those are desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. There will be service group prayers on Friday, 26th of April, 2024, for children ministry, peacekeepers, and foreign language units at the King Marina for those at the Global Headquarters at 5 p.m. All concerned should fast before coming. What baptism holds immediately after this service, while live foundation class for new converts and believers holds tomorrow Monday by 5 p.m. and on Saturday by 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. respectively at the Global Headquarters and all our branches globally. The class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure. Please come with your writing materials. Pregnant and expectant models meeting holds on Wednesday, 24th of April, 2024 at the Global Headquarters by 5 p.m. In preparation for Mother's Day Celebration 2024, women at the Global Headquarters will meet immediately after the fourth service at the main auditorium. To receive daily prayers, prophecies and wisdom quotes for living, like, share and follow David Ibiomi on Facebook, at David Ibiomi on Instagram, at David underscore Ibiomi, X at David Ibiomi. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and testimony. My name is Henry Romosei Unwewolo. I'm here to testify for the goodness of God. He has been so faithful to me since I joined this commission. And during the 27th anniversary, God used his servant David Biome to favor me with four bedroom bungalow. I want to return all the glory unto him. Thank you. God is faithful as a doer to please start to have faith and give him all the glory.
Father, we're exalted and magnified in Jesus' mighty name. Please have your seat in God's presence. We are taking prayers. Isaiah 5, verse 26. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. He asked the Holy Spirit to draft in unprecedented multitude, old and new members, into salvation ministry services, both to our physical churches and online platforms. Rise to your feet and pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, he said, I will multiply salvation ministries and we shall never be few. He will glorify us and shall not be small. Holy Spirit, we ask that you draft in multitude, unprecedented multitude into all our services and programs using today's services as a point of contact for our old new, com- com- new old members, our new converts, our first timers, those we invited. Lord, we ask that you compel them in in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that saw our flyers, as many that saw our public Applications online. Lord, we ask that you drop them to this service in the mighty name of Jesus as many families that were invited. Holy Spirit, we ask that you compel them in the name of Jesus. You say you go forth to the highways and the angels. You compel them that your hearts will be filled. Say the reapers are the angels. Lord, send the angels to go forth and compel multitude. Our online platform, let it be jammed. Our churches globally, wherever we are planted. Lord, compel multitude, compel cities to be empty to our churches in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Isaiah 9 verse 8 the Lord sent a word to Jacob and alighted upon Israel. He asked the Lord to send his word to every family genuinely connected to salvation ministries that will bet our desired testimonies. Pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, for the entrance of the word of God, give it light and understanding unto the simple. Lord, we ask as your word come for Lord, give us understanding of your word. Open our eyes to see wondrous things out of thy law that will bear testimonies in the lives of all participating in our service today. That will bear testimonies, that will bear progress in our families in the name of Jesus. For your word is powerful and quick. A word, Lord, that will bear quick and powerful testimonies in our lives in our families. Lord, we ask that you give to each and everyone in this service and all our services today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that testimonies be better as we receive your word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. He has had us your voice and appreciate him. Lord, we give you glory and praise. Be that we exalted in Jesus' name. Please have your seat in God's presence. Let's welcome officials to share testimonies from our live churches and online platforms. Salvation Ministries Church, God's Own Plaza, Kubwa 1, FCT, Abuja, Nigeria, from Aris, Abuja. My 10-month-old baby was diagnosed with vaginal atresia. Vaginal atresia is a birth defect characterized by closure or absence of uh, the female genital tract. That's the private part of a female. I went to the hospital and the doctors recommended a surgery, but that it can only be done when she is between the ages of 5 and 7 years. I returned home and called on the God of this commission to intervene. When we went back to the hospital, it was discovered that the private part that was closed had opened up miraculously. All oh, glory be to God. Salvation Mercies Church, number one church close behind UBA, YKC Junction, Woji Town, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria, from Kelvin Naboth. At the beginning of this year, I had saved some money to buy a laptop, but it was not enough to get me the quality of laptop that I actually needed. While I was contemplating on what to do, the Holy Spirit gave me an instruction to sow the money to the Glory Rain 2024 program, and I immediately obeyed. In April 2024, there was redundancy at my place of work, And almost all my colleagues were laid off, but God exempted me and promoted to a higher position instead with a higher pay. Now I can easily afford the kind of laptop that I needed. Praise God. Testimony from best man, Nebuwe Doha Kata. I had been planning to travel out of Nigeria since 2020, so it was not forthcoming. In January 2023, I decided to effectively engage in Kingdom Advancement Services. On the 4th of January 2024, I saw 17 missed calls on my phone from someone I had discussed it with some years ago. When we finally spoke, he informed me of a job opportunity in Qatar and asked me to apply if I was interested. Today, I'm working in Qatar. Truly, it pays to serve God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Salvation Ministries Church, number 7, Africa Road, Iponri, Surulere, Lagos State, Nigeria, from Chiamaka, Osuago. During the Salvation Word of Life Bible Institute session, that is the commission school, God healed me of a rash that I had experienced from a long time. Also, during the church's 27th anniversary last week, I had generalized body weakness, but after I prayed about it, God healed me. I give him all the glory. The God of our Father has done this. Rise to your feet and give him all the glory. Shall we lift our hands to heaven this morning? Magnify the King of all kings and glorify his name forever. Give him praise and glory. Exalt him because no one is like him. Forever is on the throne. Go ahead and just give thanks to him. Open your mouth and give him thanks. Glory to the Lamb of God. We give you praise and glory. Are you talking to God this morning? Are you speaking to him? Thank you, Mary God. In Jesus' most wonderful name. You have come to this second service. Everything not working, your family will begin to work. Amen. Nothing changes a man's story like light. The day you encounter light, darkness can't harass you. He said, the light shineth in the darkness, and darkness comprehended it enough. Light is simply the word of God. Darkness is the devil. Lord, cause your light to beam on my path. That everything the enemy wants to destroy my life with, I will overcome them with light. You don't struggle with darkness when you have light. Lord, I need light to gain flight in this service. That area of my life, I have not gotten light. Open my eyes with understanding. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Are you praying seriously? Are you praying lightly? Talk to God this moment. Blessed be your name, mighty God. In Jesus' most wonderful name. In this second service, God will give you a word that will change your family story. In the name of Jesus. Nobody expresses change where he's not willing to change. But if you don't change, you can't take charge. Refusing to change is the energy of fools, the wise man said. And when you don't change, you remain with chains. Lord, I'm desiring to change. God's word is to bring change. To bring what? He said, we are changed. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So where there's no change, that means someone has not accepted the truth. He said, for we all, not some of us, with open faith, behold my snake, the glory of the Lord, are changed. So change is from where? The word of God. There can never be any change if there's no word. Lord, I desire change. And is that what? By accepting the truth. You may not like the truth, but you can't try off without the truth. Truth is the truth no matter you don't like it. It means the truth. Lord, I desire the right word to bring what? Change in my life. I don't want to remain the same. Go ahead and pray again for yourself. I desire to encounter change in my life. Are you talking to God in the name of Jesus? Are you 
I desire change in my life. Blessed be God forever. In the name of your family will never remain the same after today. Lord, breathe upon your word that each person will go home with a specific word for the next phase of our lives. In the precious name of Jesus. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. You're welcome to the month of wisdom for greater exploits. Daniel 11 verse 22 he said, Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. But exploits are done with wisdom. Today, message is wisdom for family progress, part two. Wisdom for family progress, part two. A family is a group of individuals living together under one roof, usually under one herd. It's divinely created as a result of marriage. Family comes through marriage between a male and female who become parents and then they produce children or adopt children who are committed to producing values, character, etc. through love, discipline, and by examples. You find out that if you look at Genesis and if you look at Malachi, Matthew 1, they say, and this began this, 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 this began this. They are trying to trace the lineage of that family. And when the lineage is lost, you see them say, oh, I can't find my root. Just like the slaves, most of them, are for, they, can't, they can't trace their lineage anymore because somewhere along the line, they were moved to other places. So now that they are born again, you have a new family, the family of Jesus. Is that true? But if your family must be progressive, if your family must be stable, your family must be built, your family has to be the best you want, there are three things that I'll show you from scriptures that must be in place. If those things are not in place, no matter what you do, you can't enjoy peace in your family, you can't enjoy progress in your family, you can't enjoy sex in your family. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs 24. That is the key scripture for the teaching of today. 24, 3, and 4. That word house is not talking about building, talking about families. Is that true? Shall we read together one to go? True wisdom is an house. What? Talking about family. And by understanding this word, it's not talking about the cement house, it's talking about the family. And by what? Shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches? Shout hallelujah. Three words stood out in those two verses of scripture. Number one is what? Wisdom. What is it? It said through wisdom is a family built. And understanding the family is established. And by knowledge shall the family begin to see things happen. Is that three? Knowledge Understanding and what? Wisdom. These are three things that every family needs. If you look at that scripture, they didn't say through kissing. They didn't say through sex. It said through knowledge. Through what? Knowledge. Sex is not mentioned there. Not that sex is not important, but that's not mentioned there. That means it's not. Have you noticed someone say, I, 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 I love you, and then the next very week you are divorced. So love is not even mentioned there. And love is not mentioned. So love is not enough to keep a family. Say right here. It didn't tell me you love me. It doesn't keep the family. Because it's not mentioned there. So what is it that keeps the family? Knowledge. Understanding. And wisdom. Shout hallelujah. So these three things are needed for any family or marriage or home or house to make outstanding Progress. These three things. But we're taking them in sequence because I thought in the first service I will lay this foundation in all services. Number one mentioned there is what? Knowledge. What is mentioned there? No, eh, wisdom, understanding, but if you want to put them properly, it's what? Knowledge has to come first. Knowledge has to come what? The word knowledge means information. Means what? Information. If any family must be progressive 
or stand the test of time, the husband and wife must have relevant information. They must have what? Concerning the family. He said, you shall know the truth. The word truth is original information. That's what truth means. You shall know the original information. And then that information has added family free. John 6, 8.32, sorry. People of God hear this. My best man just spoke with me now. We laughed over it, but it looks simple. He said he went for a driving test in Maryland, United States. The test was so difficult for the driving test. Before you do a driving test in the Western world, they must give you lectures. You must do theoretical lectures. They give you a manual to read. Then they'll give you a test. And they'll even tell you this test didn't pass it. You don't go just walk in and say, I need lessons. No. You go through a process. Go through what? You must have relevant information on how to drive on the road. So you find out that the cars of people last longer than their marriages. Because they know how to utilize the car on the road. You went to school. Some of you spend years, 17 years, some even 18 years, primary school, secondary school, university. So when you came out, you have so much knowledge of your career through no matter the challenges, you stay in your career. Am I talking? Now you got into marriage, you had no knowledge. How do you think you succeed? <laughs> in, in fact, if it's the government, they just say, two of you, do you want to marry? Yes. Fill this document. They don't even tell you anything. They just say, fill this paper. So no, no test. So the government is more interested in your driving than your marriage. They feel that if you're on their road, you can kill, but marriage, you can divorce. So, you see that marriage is crash even from the court. Nothing can take the place of knowledge. It is irreplaceable. It is what? Before you go to marry or you're married, you must have proper information about marriage and family. It's right here. Nobody can last in any venture where you don't have knowledge of it. Am I talking? People think they know about marriage. You don't know it. If you know it, you won't take the steps you are taking. So increase in knowledge brings stability in the marriage and family. But here this is well. Number two, mention there is what? Understand it. What is mentioned there? Understanding is the ability to interpret life as God sees it. That you attend a class does not mean you understand the lectures. You were in class. If you understood, you would have passed. The boy word A and the man word F, they were in the same class. They were giving the same lectures, but that one did not understand. Understanding is to be able to comprehend what you have been taught. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing me, sir? So, many people have known about marriage. They know about family, but they have no understanding of it. Something happened to a man in Acts chapter 8. If you read from 27 to 37, in verse 30. The man called Ethiopian eunuch. The Bible said... Philip met him and said, understand that what thou readest. So I ask you, you want to marry. Do you understand that what you're going into? Or understand that what you are in? Do you really understand what marriage is? It's a lie. Many don't understand. They are in it, but they lack understanding. That you are a man of God does not mean you understand marriage. That's an assumption. So here. And if I want to understand something, even in the natural, 
I don't ask somebody else. I ask the manufacturer of anything. Now, for instance, if I want to have understanding of this microphone, it would be stupid for me to go and ask Coca-Cola. They may be bigger than this company, but I have to ask this company of what this microphone can do. Through? Because Coca-Cola is not a manufacturer of this microphone. Any product you want to understand, the only person you ask is who? Manufacturer. And the manufacturer does something in any product you want to buy. They put the manual at the top. They will tell you, read this manual before operating this gadget. True? The sole manufacturer of marriage and family is God. It's not the state. It's not your culture. It's God that instituted the marriage. That's the first institution of God, the family. So, if I must know about the family and marriage, I must go to the originator of it, God. And his manual is the word of God. So, here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, any other book outside the word of God is an opinion. It's not the truth. Anything outside God's word is somebody's opinion, not what? A psychologist can't give you an answer because he's not a manufacturer. God's word is the only solution to all crises in families and marriages. Shout hallelujah. So I must understand what this book is saying concerning marriage. Are you kidding me, sir? I must understand what this book is saying concerning family. That means I have a responsibility to search it out. And knowledge is not a gift. You buy books and read. You must read it. Do you know you can never drive in the western world until you read the manual? You must read that manual. Because they will ask you questions. But today you are going to marry. You have not read one book on marriage. Join us. We love each other. Love is not enough. It will crash with our knowledge. I love him. You know, the guy looks good. He's tall. It will crash. It will what? Without knowledge and understanding. So here. He, I like that kind of person. You know, he has a pointed nose. Glory to God. Very tall and slim. I like him. It will crash. Because that is not enough. It can kiss me deep. It will crash. Kissing is not mission there. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. When he sleeps with me, I love it. It will crash. Sleeping is not mission there. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So here. Number three is what? Wisdom. It's not enough to know a thing. Anything you know you don't apply is foolishness. Wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. So if I understand that I have knowledge of marriage and family and understand it, I have to apply what I understand. Are you getting me, sir? It's not enough for me to know it. I must apply what I know. That is, he that hear the says of mine and do with them. Matthew 7, 24. It's like not what? A wise man. You are not wise if you are not doing what you know. I said something. The medical doctor knows that smoking is what? Dangerous to health, but he smokes. Is he a wise man? No, that's a doctor that's very foolish. Knowing the truth and not applying the truth makes you foolish. Now look at Matthew 7. For many of you who just read the scripture from the surface, 24 to 27. 24 to 27. Shall we read together? I want to go. Whoso, therefore, whosoever hear the sins of mine and what? I will liken unto him what? Which build his house upon what? The rock is the word of God. Yes, verse 25. The rain what? The floods? The winds? Beat upon that house and it fell not because it was founded what? It beat upon the family. That's the meaning. It didn't fall. Verse 26. And everyone that hear the sins of mine and what? Shall be likened unto what? Which build his house upon what? The sun. He builds his house on social media. That's the sun. 
on philosophy of men, on ideologies of men. The rain descended, the wind flowed. The two things happened to two of them, the same thing. Why did they fall? One was built on this world, one was built on social media. The thing making you to divorce passed through, somebody passed through it and came out of it. Are you getting me? The thing making you to quarrel everybody in your family, somebody else was able to make peace with it. Challenges come to the two, it depends on your level of knowledge. Are you getting me, sir? Your children are giving you headache. Somebody else's children also came with problems and they were able to manage them and turn them to become better. So here. What is it? Knowledge. What is it? Knowledge. So your family must be built on the manufacturer's manual. You're plated with the manufacturer's work. I said something. It will be stupid for you to get angry with an electronics you bought and they say read this manual and you, then you didn't read it. You're not angry. This thing is not working. This is not working. Stupid manufacturer. They say, read this manual. Read this what? You bought a camera. They say, read it. You don't know how to operate the camera. It's a useless camera. It cannot even snap. You don't even know where to press to snap. You are not angry. You throw the camera on the ground. No sense camera. What is the business with the manufacturer? He said, read this what? You are trying to enter into marriage to operate marriage when you have not read the manual of marriage. Are you getting me, sir? Stop being angry over what you have not found out. I said anything outside the original manual is opinion. Is what? I said something in the first service. We are heavenly citizens on the earth. So we must bring heaven's culture where? On the earth. As heavenly citizens, we have our own laws. We have our own what? Laws and rules on the earth. Now it said that kingdom what? Thy will be done on earth as well. So, citizens of heaven, according to Philippians 3 verse 20, the New King James Version, we are not to be ruled by earthly laws. We are supposed to bring heavenly culture into the earthly realm. Is that clear, sir? We have our own way of life. We have our own culture. Our culture is the word of God. So, here. We are not to walk by the worldly standards. The world should copy us and walk like us. But today, the, <coughs> the church is trying to walk like the world. So it's, an, it's an abnormality. Are you getting me now? He said, well, that celebrity after all. The man, this is what he did. That is the world. Is that what the word of God says? So here. Hmm. So we have to bring our lifestyle to redirect, to restructure, to rediscover the truth for the society. So the society is supposed to copy us, not with copying the society. Shout hallelujah. And in the first time I said, what's the purpose of the family? I talk on that. I can't go back to that. I said fundamental truths about the what? The family. Fundamental truths about the family. And I was able to share four of them. Roman figure 4. Now, fundamental truth about the family, Roman figure 5. Children should first be educated in the family. Children should be educated first what? In the first four, let me just summarize them because I wanted to finish. I said, number one, it is where children are raised. The family is where children are raised. No school. Not institutions like juvenile centers. Number two, Roman figure. Every society is the true reflection of the family. Three, I said, the sanctity of the family is the bedrock for human survival and security. Number four, I said, the family is the place for preservation of godly generational values. That's where I stopped. Now, number five, I said, children should first be educated where? In the family. Now, for instance, when I mean education, it's not school because you may not, but sex education must be given first to the family. Teach them first at home. I avoid children to be miseducated. What do I mean? When you have sex, your mind will just go say, Wait, I want you to pass for a second. Your daughter must know when she starts seeing red what it means. You don't say, it's not in school, she will know. You say, look, when you're of this age, blood will come out of your body. This is the meaning. My son, when you're of this age, a woman begins to look for you, don't go until you get married. My daughter... Men 
and woman at social age, they get married, not woman and woman. Because every lesbianism, lesbianism starts from body's house. You are a boy, it is not man and man. Any man that approaches you is against the Bible. God is against homosexuality. It's not accepted by God. You give him the sex education from where? Home. It's not in school. Otherwise, they'll tell him, oh boy, this thing does not matter. When you are very moved, you can satisfy yourself with another woman. And the girl does not know. So I hear. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. The New Living Translation. New Living Translation, please. Let's read the Bible because today, people even quote said, is it really wrong to be a homosexual? Even in church here, they are. There are people who sleep with their fellow women. Let's see from the Bible whether it's correct. Oh, yeah, read. Want to go? Am I the writer of the Bible? Tell your children it's against the Bible. In case you're sleeping with your fellow man, you're already mad. You have a demonic and psychiatric problem. And if you're a woman sleeping with your fellow woman, please, the madness has increased. The madness is what? God did not create woman and woman. He created man and woman. Not Eve and Evelyn. Not Adam and Steve. Please, Stop that habit. It's not of God. So I hear. They practice it in churches. It's common. Please stop. Let's read Leviticus 20 verse 13. The same New Living Translation. Shall we read together? The A part alone. Want to go? If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man, as with a woman, both men have committed a disturbing word act. Stop there. So here. You know, even people said to put tattoo is the wrong thing. You know, people put tattoo now. True? They say it's not wrong. What is show me one Bible that shows tattoo? Leviticus 19, verse 28. The New Living Translation. Shall we read together? Living Living Translation. Shall we read the B part? This is the B part. But let's read. Do not cut your bodies for the dead. That's by the way. And do not mark your skin with what? So show your children this is the word of God. Then the child will know it's wrong. So teach them sex education where? At home. The state can't do that. The state can give information but not values. They cannot give what? Values. You are a kingdom person so your children should be different. Your children should be your children should be different. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, 18 to 21, I have to be a bit fast, please. No, the King James, you can bring King James now. Deuteronomy 11. Shall we read 18 to 21? I will read 18 to 19. Therefore shall you lay up this my words in the half and in like, your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as what? Fruitless before your eyes. Read verse 19. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of the house and upon thy gates. To the one finally. Shout hallelujah. Fill your home with God's instruction. Let the children know God's word. That's how to raise a family. Say right here. Now, responsibilities of the man. We've got a time. Because family is made of what? A man, a woman, and children. Are you going to say now? And other dependents. Sell through. But what are the responsibilities of the man? I'll be very fast. Please, permit me. The family is the true test of your relationship with God for every man. To succeed in business and career and to fail in family is to fail in life for every man. Please, every man know this. The word husband means House bond from the Latin word, the original Latin word. It means you are the one to bond the house. You are the glue. The man is the glue. 
Do you hear me? Are you getting me? Who points the house is the man. That's why the woman will leave her father's name to answer your name. You are the clue. I come again. That's why they call you father. They didn't call you. They say our father. Say our father. That means you are the provider. Father means Haba. In the original Hebrew word. And Haba means the provider. So every family, the man is the provider. First Timothy 5 8. And I was studying, and I stopped into a deep insight. I shared it in the early online money devotion. Do you know when a baby is born, the mother takes care of the baby? She provides everything for the baby, true? You see the baby, baby, she would say, I want to take care of my baby. I want to take care of my baby. You see, a mother is so tied to the baby. Is that true? Now, it's scriptural when you call your wife baby. Ask me why. Hmm? God created her and brought her to you for you to take care of her, to take her up. I come back, I'll show you from the Bible. It was not God that called the woman Eve. It was Adam. He was the one that gave her name. God only sent her to him to bring her up. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3 and verse. You'll see it. Genesis 3.20. Genesis 3.20. Let's read together. And Adam called his wife name what? Who called her? Not God. She was the mother of all living. He brought her. So he said, hey, this is my babe. Eve. God took her to Adam to raise her up. And when Adam could not manage her well, it's not a problem. So when the, your wife comes, you have your duty to take your wife up. That's why the man must be very knowledgeable before he marries. Are you getting what I'm saying? The man was what? Management of the home is the greatest test of man's leadership. <laughs> Your leadership is not just I'm the head. The greatest test of a man's leadership is the management of the home. Don't get married if you are not matured to raise the wife you want to marry. You must have first knowledge. First what? Knowledge of marriage and family. In Ephesians 6 verse 4, and you father provoke not your children to run, but bring them up in the nurture admonition of what? The Lord. That is, bring your children up. Nurture them. That one nurture means to raise up. Is that true? Listen. <laughs> I have got deep understanding Women have a role to train children, but the man has a very deep role. I'll tell you why. Train, the word train up a child, Proverbs 22 verse 6. It says, train up a child the way you go, that when he grows, he will not depart from it. Is that true? That word train, if you know the natural train, the train is not that long thing. That's not the train. The train is only the head. The rest are called coaches. I call what? Now, the head of the family is who? The man. So, anywhere the head goes, that's where the coaches go. Through? So God is saying, take the coaches, your wife and children, tied to you the head, and anywhere you go, that's where they go. So you are the one who will train them. You don't say go to church. You say, let's go to church. So you get up and say, we will go to church. Now, nah, you don't say, my wife take them to church. That is not training. You say you are the trained. You be the lead. So you take the lead. You don't tell them, don't do this, and you do it. Whatever you don't want your children to do, you don't do. And whatever you want them to do, you will take the lead. Say so here. If you want them to read, then start reading. Mm. So training should not be left in the hands of the woman alone. Acquire knowledge as a man to train. It's a provoke not your children. So the problem with today's society is Men have no knowledge, yet they are going into marriages. They want to raise up families. So we have problems of all kinds. The men are not knowledgeable. You see the train? That head is the train. The rest are called what? Coaches. So train up. Get up. My son, my daughter, get up. We are going. 
Check any family where the father is dedicated, the children are dedicated. Check any house. Any house where only the mother is dedicated, except God help them. If they have boys. I know a family in this church where the two young men who are in overseas don't go to church. In fact, two of them are in Egypt. Their father is not serious. It's almost 80 years, but he's not a serious man. His two sons, none of them go to church. And when I trace it, it's the father's behavior. No man who is not serious with God can his children be serious with God. Hmm? My wife carried them. You are deceiving yourself. Responsibly. So, see knowledge here. Yeah. Knowledge is not free. See knowledge. Where is knowledge? This knowledge. You have chemistry carryover. You are reading biology. Your family is not working. Sit down with these books. Life story. I was talking to pastors. Not from this ministry, from different ministries. The only people who were from this ministry was Pastor Charles. The rest are from other ministries. And I, I said, okay, please ask me questions. I gave it open for them to ask me questions. And one of them said, sir, I'm already divorced. So what do I do? I said, where's your wife? He says she's gone. <laughs> he heard him share the testimony on Sunday. Yes, from Cardona. I didn't pray for him. I didn't cancel him. I didn't do anything. I just said, take these books, pastor. Go and eat them. And he shared, he shared this one on Sunday. He said, what's well, so I did not pray for him. I said, this is Matthias. Eat them. You will discover where you missed it. After the Matthias, how he did his marriage, it's only him who knows. But he shared him testify that his marriage is what? Restored. He never had proper information. That your pastor does not mean you know. Mm? A professor of mathematics will fail English if he does not consult English teacher. You fail a marriage, you go back to knowledge. Go back to what? And that knowledge is not assumed. Anything outside this Bible is an opinion. You shall know original information. Well, responsibility of the women. Let me do because time is. The men, have you heard me now? Mm? Go for what? By knowledge, you know, love your wife. I don't want to go into those. If you don't have knowledge, you will you love her? No. So I don't want to go into those. Go for what? Knowledge. The wife is the God ordained help of the man. Genesis 2, verse 18. She ensures that her husband does not fail in his assignment. She does everything else to ensure the family does not break down. The wife also has a great responsibility to train the children because she spends more time with them. Bishop Edeko made a statement. He said, if my family is successful, it's because of my wife. Wouldn't you be happy your husband referred to you that you are really helped him to succeed? She ensures they are properly brought up, exhibiting godly character. She must be hospitable. She must be what? The more hospitable the woman is, the more blessed the home becomes. Because distribution is the only way to multiplication. Any house you go and you don't eat food is the woman. Well, she controls the kitchen. A wife promotes her husband by giving him respect and dignity that is due him. The wife must operate on the platform of submission. Submission does not mean slavery. It means coming down under the rules of God. Finally, hear this. So women, you go back to what? Knowledge. You go back to what? Men, you go back to what? Understand the knowledge and then apply the knowledge. You have peace. <laughs> there will be progress. That what? You can't apply what you don't know. Do what? My people are destroyed. No, they didn't. So all this deliverance you're doing is not necessary. All the online prayers are they're not what? Go for knowledge. Go for what? Knowledge. 
<laughs> so I hear. Hey, 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 tell my wife is somehow. Two of you lack what? Knowledge. Two of you are ignorant. That you've been born again for 50 years, the time you have knowledge. Age does not guarantee a pass on the exam you failed. Otherwise, they should give wife to those who failed it when they were 17 and then give them when they are 80. If you fail at 17, you will rewrite it, even if you are 80 years. Otherwise, they will not give wife a certificate. Finally, all members of the family must have these qualities. Let me say the qualities you must have in three minutes. Every member of the family, children, husband, wife, dependents, housemates, everybody must have these qualities. Let me say the Every member of the family must have this what? Number one, accountability. Number one, what? Don't give money and you don't account for it. Please, every month should be accountable. When your husband gives him money, tell him this is how I spend the money. A good man does not need it, but you tell him. I learned it from Bishop Edebo. My wife tells me, her money, I'm not interested, but any money I give to her, she tells me this is how I spend it, is the balance. And I will never take it. A good man will never take it, but you should be accountable. Don't give your children money and they don't tell you how they spend the money. They must tell you, mommy, the money you gave to me, this I spent it. Are you getting me, sir? Number two, responsibility. Everybody must be what? Responsible. The every member of the family must be responsible. You should be responsible to know what to do per time. Is that true? If they say six o'clock is for prayers, they don't need to come and remind you the six o'clock, you should be responsible. Number three, Morality con values. Everyone must be morally sound and must have values. In our family, we don't steal. Why did you go to steal? We don't steal in this family. They must have what? Values. This family does not cheat. What is wrong with you? The family must have what? Values. Must have what? Godly values, I mean. For respect for each other. Respect for what? I'm standing on the altar. I've never stood with my elder brother to argue with him. I only corrected my elder brother as a pastor when one day there was a wedding and he did not come. I said, brother, what you did is wrong. I was trained never to exchange words with my elder brother. When you see junior talking to him, you are not trained. Some even argue with their parents. And the family, biologically, where I came from, my younger brother cannot stand to challenge me. I've never stood in front of my elder brother to challenge him. When you see such, you know that you, there's no respect. You know what? You tell the junior that's your elder brother, don't talk to him anyhow. There are women who don't respect wife and wife who don't respect husbands. Everybody must learn respect. Must learn what? Respect. It's a value for all. Respect for each other. Then number five, self what? Number five what? Self what? Everybody must know the value of who they are in Christ. Is that true? Number six, must control their emotions. Must control what? Every member of the family must control their emotions. It's not godly. You are not the only warrior. Every day people hear your voice. No. Control your what? Emotions. Bring them into subjection. Every time your neighbors know you people are shouting family. Now, control your emotions. Separate them, separate them, separate them, separate them. Control your emotions. You stay at the gate, I will show you, Sabi Man. Number seven, finally. Must believe in the word of God as a final authority on any issue. Must believe in the word of God as the final authority on any issue. Once anybody in the family is arguing, they say, this is what the Bible says. They say, oh, buddy. case closed. It will never come to a time in a family where you say the word of God says, and someone says, I don't believe in the word of God. Something's wrong then. The word becomes the final authority. Anything the Bible says is final. Then your family can make progress. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 
So number one, you must have what? Knowledge. Number two, you must understand. Number three, you must walk in wisdom. That's apply what you know. With these three things, life can go forward. So don't assume. Go and get these materials. Don't say, I, I, I know about marriage. You don't know. You don't know. Brother, you don't know. In case you know. The what you know is not enough. Some people say paper. Here they fail. They say extra paper. Is that extra paper? <laughs> yeah, they give them dirty. They give them what? If what you know has not brought peace and progress, then you don't know it. The information you have is not complete. It's not what? Yes, you wrote this, but you didn't write the facts. You wrote only what you know. And they give the examiner look at you and say, nonsense, 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 30. So the thing you're writing is not bringing peace. Go back to knowledge. Go back to what? I told them, I said, marriage class, before we used to be three months, now I've noticed that people are having too many problems in the church. So I said, six months. Even the six months, I'm trying to change to nine months. So people will not sit down to acquire knowledge. So before they go, in fact, within nine months, some even when they start class, I will back, back out because they'll say, ah, this woman is not the kind of person who's qualified for me. Ah, I didn't know. No need. But even the men, some people qualify to now. From what I know now, this one is not, you are not the one. But when you don't have such knowledge, you can just go in. There are some of you who are married to you. If you know, you will marry the person. So now you will have knowledge. You have what? Knowledge. So you say, this person is it qualified for me to marry? So if we don't say to nine months, I said, God speak to me. Nine months. Because you took 17 to 18 years to go to school. You married for a lifetime. Some even some don't even, no class. Three months is not enough. Oh. Six months is what we are doing now, but I will increase it to nine. So by the time you enter, you know so much that divorce will never come to you. Who if you are called to you? You'll be laughing and say, No, no, no. I have so much knowledge. I have so much what? To divorce. It's both male and female. We are going to pray. In fact, you don't need too much prayer here, sir. What am I praying? You have been praying since doing midnight prayer. Midnight prayer will not get hurt. I beg. We have prayer points here, but I'm looking at it. What are the prayer points that we're going to pray? Prayer points one. <laughs> Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. James 4 7. He said, I wish you above that man's plan be heaven and the soul. Frustrate every plan of Satan to attack the health and well being of your family. Ask the Lord to shield your family from sickness and diseases and help you maintain a strong and vibrant life. Is that true? Go ahead in the name of Jesus on the screen. Pray in the name of Jesus. Command sickness to leave your family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, it amplifies it. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you, setting you on a firm foundation. And will protect and guide you from the evil one. Colossians 2, 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain after the tradition of men after the redemption of the world and not after Christ. 1 Kings 3, 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart that I may design both good and, good and bad. You pray. That the Lord will protect your family from negative influences, negative what? Harmful relationships and toxic environments. Ask the Holy Spirit to enable you to design and avoid every wrong relationship that may destroy your family peace and progress. It's on the screen. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus' mighty name. He said, James 1 5, if any man lack wisdom, let me ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given him. Isaiah 30 verse 21, and the ear shall hear a word behind it saying, This is the way walk in the end, when you turn to right, when you turn to left. Verse, the third prayer point is that pray for divine wisdom, pray for what? And guidance in our children's life. Ask the Holy Spirit to help them make wise decisions and lead them on the right path, aligning their choices with their divine plan. Lord, our children both in school, they will not just call anybody and say, This is my friend. Lord, guide them to make the right word. They just know how to choose the right friends, the company to keep. Go ahead and pray for them in the name of Jesus. Pray for our children. Pray for our children. In Jesus' mind, name. Now, for those who desire to marry, I saw something in my studies in Psalm 68, verse 6, the NIV. Please, every service you bring it out. He said, every service you just bring it out. God said it. No, new NIV now. God says the lonely. Who are the lonely people? People who are supposed to marry but are not married in families. Do you hear that? That's when somebody is single and you desire to marry, you will say, you know what? In families. How many desire to marry? Male and female. Now lift your hands, you'll be surprised. God said he will set you from like decree by this service. Anybody who says, I want to marry, I want to have my own family, receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever is delaying you to get married, your children to get married, your grandchildren to get married, you can start for somebody. It must not be only your, some of you, your children need to marry, your sister need to marry, your brother needs to marry. Now I decree, everyone you are desiring or you want to marry, I command you, get married in the name of Jesus. By the service of this day, every delay is broken. The Lord give your own husband, give your own wife, in the name of Jesus. You will have your own family. If you believe it for yourself or somebody, as you say, amen, the miracle is born. In the name of Jesus. Now, every family will make progress. With what we have heard, we will make progress. In the third service, I'm going to teach, I'm not going to repeat any service the same. Every service, I'm going to progress. Is that through? I'm going to talk in a different thing altogether in the third service. I'll talk about even money. How families should handle money. Don't pretend not to talk about money in your family. I'll talk about that in the fourth service. Your family must talk about money. How should... Just to see some people no talk about money. They go and go to school bigger than the husband's salary. Then they come under pressure. So you talk about money. Is that through? I'll tell you how you talk about money. You go and get to school in Canada and put yourself in the can. The man doesn't have money for Canada, but they send your friend, send his child to you, and send his friend to Canada. And then after one year school fees, he can't pay the second year. You start worrying everybody. So instead of being the can to send somebody to Canada, that you are in UK does not mean everything will be okay. You can be in US and be useless. If you don't have wisdom. You don't have what? You can be in US and be useless. You can be in the UK and not be okay. You can be in Canada and be in the can if you don't know what to do. So apply wisdom. You must be born again. You must be what? You must be born again. <laughs> wisdom is very important. <laughs> I've never been under pressure. I like to live my life as I have my income. I hate to be under financial pressure. You know why? Don't live above your income. I'll teach that. Don't live above what? Whatever you don't have, don't push yourself to have it. Families are under pressure. Are under what? Because they are living above their size. I'll tell you that. Now, if you need service, you have not accepted Jesus Christ. Confess to the family of God. Is the family of God first before any other biological family? You must be born again. Wherever you are, you are not born again. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Offer that prayer, keep standing while others take their seats. If today is your first time to fellowship with us, kindly stand. We want to welcome you. This is your first time. This is your first time. Kindly stand. 
You're welcome to Salvation Amnesties because you've come to this family of Jesus. Your life will never remain the same. We want to celebrate you. We want to love you. We want to love you. Just another tell them we celebrate you. Give a warm handshake. Please give us your details from that paper in Jesus' mighty name. Abraham had a family. And from the gift of God to the family, he gave him Isaac and he said, Now from the gift, honor me with the gift. And Abraham took Isaac to offer him to God as a sacrifice. And God never took Isaac, but he said, Now that you have obeyed my voice, in blessing, I will bless you. And Abraham became a blessed man all around. Out of what God has given your family, the resources, take your own Isaac now out. God will not take it. What he does, he takes from you to multiply it. He said, multiply this is soon. Abraham did not stay there and say, God, I will give you Isaac and be praying. He offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Praying for financial breakthrough without a point of contact of Isaac is a waste of energy. So package your own quality Isaac. I'm reading Genesis 22, 5 to 28. So package your own Isaac. It, ask yourself, is this an Isaac offering? If it's not an Isaac, then change it. Isaac means your best. Isaac means your what? He didn't give Ishmael. He gave who? Isaac. So don't give leftover. Give your best. Package your tithe. Package every quality offering. Lift it up. Say, Lord, this is my own Isaac. As I, as I render it to you, let it return back multiplied fold. Pray over your offering in the name of Jesus. Father, as I give this mind to you, open your mouth and pray. If that's your, pay your tithe, everything, package them. Pray over it if it's your Isaac. As you drop it today, your own blessings also drop. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can take songs in two minutes and then I come back to close. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Please take this closing information. Tuesday's home cell. Tuesday's what? It's home. Sorry. Tuesday's home fellowship. It's home fellowship. At 6 p.m. at the end, I'll use your house as a cell, as a center, for fellowship center. Thursday is living error free. Living error free. At 5 p.m., invite people to be part. Sunday is going to be a special anointing service. It's been the last Sunday in the month of wisdom for greater expo. So come with oil. We will teach and do anointing. Remember operation one week, one soul. Bring them to church continuous. Even in this service, bring members of your family to be a part of the service. Now go and buy marriage and family series. Marriage and what? Go and buy the complete set. 
and I launch their writing jump. Is that through? All of who have written and those who are writing, may the Lord make you successful. Yeah. Everyone connected to this commission who is writing jump or is about to write whatever one, God make you successful. Yeah. And help you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Rise to your feet. Whatever exam you're writing, you'll be successful. Yeah. Nobody should assume and say, I don't need this thing. You need it all. What you don't know is what the enemy used against you. The greatest instrument the enemy has is ignorance. Is what? You can be praying over something that you need knowledge for. Lift your hands to heaven. So go and tell them, give you the whole series. Give you the whole what? Don't say knowledge is expensive. The stomach, you have been eating uh, meat pie for years. You can't have carry over and be eating food. Lift your hands to heaven. To everyone in this service, I decree your family to make progress. Yeah. Wherever the enemy has stunted your family from making progress, I cause this works in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Your family will advance. Yeah. Your family will be known. Yeah. Your family will begin to enjoy favor. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everywhere the enemy is trying to crack your family, we command stability. We decree peace in Jesus' mighty name. Your children will never be a concern in Jesus' mighty name. The grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet love of the Holy Spirit rest now by with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever, amen, peace. God bless you. Invite somebody for the next service.
Hallelujah. You're excited to be in the third service today. Give the Lord a big, big shout of praise. We know the God of David the Biome have done so well for you. Proceed to the success entrance for those at the global headquarters. Officials are waiting to document your testimony. The word of God speaking in Proverbs 4 and verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all that getting, get understanding. You will lift up your voice and appreciate God for the encounter of divine wisdom for all round progress in your family. Lift up your voice and appreciate Him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we give you all the glory, we magnify you for the encounter of another dimension of wisdom for family progress in Jesus' mighty name. I appreciate God.
Worship and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. With a big hand clap to Jesus, you may please be comfortably seated in God's presence. In enjoying marital bliss. Papa said, knowledge acquired and correctly applied will yield amazing results in your family. Jam your hands to the glory of God as we invite the following testifiers to share their testimonies. Clap like you are the next testifier as they come. Gloria Johnson. Scholar Anunam Ibisud Bobo and Evelyn Abiye Eriso. While they come, listen to the following information. A very warm welcome to this awesome service. Visit the Knowledge Center or e store at smhos4.com immediately after the fourth service to obtain today's message and all the messages in hard copy and flash drive. Or subscribe to our only collections on MP3 and DVD. Among the materials are message April 2024, week of spiritual empowerment. Praise for greater exploits, Glory Rain 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books that warned us of wisdom, wisdom for creativity, wisdom for family peace, wisdom quotes volume one, wisdom quotes volume two, wisdom to see ahead, winning with ease and the winning mentality. Help your children possess the right knowledge of godliness and excellence in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation by visiting the Wisdom Bank today or call the number as displayed. The knowledge of God's word puts in command over all things. Salvation World of Life Bible Institute presents our first session of the International Basic Certificate Course for the month of May 2024. 
basic certificate course will be both live and online for countries with GMT plus one or minus one time zones to participate. Nigeria in close save. Pastors hosting Bible school should please announce at their branches. School begins on Monday, 6th and ends Friday, 17th of May, 2024. Please note, school fee scholarship is available for students who cannot afford it. For registration, visit wobi.smhos.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. To commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offering, send your seed to the account as displayed. Okma International Academy Infant Junior and College announces admission into pre-kindergarten primary 1 to 5 and year 7 GSS 1 for 2024-2025 academic session. Applicants are to fill and submit an online application form at okma.org.ng. Note, applicants for the college must be 10 years by September 2024. For entrance examination dates, venues and all the details, please visit okma.org.ng or call any of the numbers as displayed. Those are desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. There will be service group prayers on Friday, 26th of April, 2024, for children ministry, peacekeepers, and foreign language units at the King Marina for those at the Global Headquarters at 5 p.m. All concerned should fast before coming. What baptism hosts immediately after this service, while live foundation class for new converts and believers hosts tomorrow Monday by 5 p.m. and on Saturday by 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. respectively at the Global Headquarters and all our branches globally. The class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure. Please come with your writing materials. Pregnant and expectant models meeting hosts on Wednesday, 24th of April, 2024 at the Global Headquarters by 5 p.m. In preparation for Mother's Day Celebration 2024, women at the Global Headquarters will meet immediately after the fourth service at the main auditorium. To receive daily prayers, prophecies and wisdom quotes for living, like, share and follow David Ibiomie on Facebook, at David Ibiomie on Instagram, at David underscore Ibiomie, X at David Ibiomie. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and testimony. My, my name is Ibiso Bobo. On the 17th of last week, I went for my PPA. I was called that my apartment is on fire. So I told them I'm a tighter. It will not happen. When I went, none of my belongings got burned. I came to give God the glory for you. Your name and the testimony. I am scholar Anonam. I was passing through challenge. Papa and Mama blowed my head. They suddenly called me. I was restored. Happiness came to me. Secondly, I was sick. I was taken to hospital. Instead of my PB to calm down, it was going up. On the last day of the week of spiritual empowerment on March, that day, Papa prayed. The praise I praised like never before. I say, God, today is the day I will never let you go until you bless me. After the praise, vengeance, prayers, and all, God restored my head. I've come to give God all the glory. Your name and your testimony. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Evelyn Abieriso. My testimony is on God's faithfulness. The month of April has been a month of celebration for my family, firstly for the church, for our anniversary. And to precisely today, the 21st of April, I was joined together with my husband six years ago on this exalted order. I just want to appreciate God. And also, exactly next week, Sunday, is going to be my husband's 40th birthday. I want to say, God, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your name and your testimony. Praise the Lord, Church. My name is Gloria Johnson. This year, Glory Reign, I wrote on my expectation form that I want God to help us to complete our house, which we built since 2018, and God did it for me. And another testimony is that I've been having us happens, but after last month, a uh, week of spiritual empowerment, God healed me sometime after uh, that week of spiritual empowerment that Sunday as we are praising God something stony moved 
from this side of my body out. And since then, I've not absorbed that uh, pains anymore. I've come to return all glory to God. The same God is here to give you your own testimonies. Rise to your feet, return the glory back to God. Him. Father, we give you all the glory. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated as we go to God in prayers. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3b. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Pray that by the power of the Holy Ghost, every unbeliever that comes into salvation ministries, either at our physical churches or online platforms, should be born again. Rest your feet, rest your voice, pray in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. We pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, every unbeliever that will come into salvation misses either at our physical churches or our platform to be born again. Holy Spirit of God, convince and convert them. No sinners that come in contact into salvation misses, they will all be saved in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Psalm 125 verse 3, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Isaiah 37 verse 35, for I will defend this city, so save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. You pray to destroy any physical or spiritual attack targeted at the well-being of families. Generally comes to salvation ministries, you will ask the Lord to defend all that concerns families granted to this commission. Rest of us, pray in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no report from against thee shall prosper. We pray to destroy any physical or spiritual attack targeted 
are the weapon of families generally connected to salvage your missus with any form of evil, any form of crisis, any form of confusion, suppression of any kind. Satan, the devil, we come against you, we bind you, we test you far. We ask the Lord to defend all that concerns families connected to salvage your missus in the name of Jesus. He has said us to appreciate him. Father, we thank you. We give all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated as we welcome the officials to share online testimonies. Salvation Ministries Church, Rumokroshi Civil Center, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. From Hosanna Sunday, before coming for the 27th year anniversary celebration service, I had intense dysmenorrhea, that's pain on menstruation. I took the anointing oil and applied it on my waist. And as I started studying the Bible, the pain ceased instantly. Also, last month, God's servant instructed us to write down three things we wanted God to do for us. And among the requests on my list was a miracle job. To the glory of God, that same month, I got a job. Praise the Lord. Salvation Ministry Church, besides your filling station, Crawford Road Airport Roundabout, the Kemso Komasia Shanti, Ghana, from Elijah David. We had been struggling with our church building and ministry for a few years before I came in contact with the resident pastor of Salvation Ministries Church in Kumasi, who encouraged me to enroll for the Salvation Word of Life Bible Institute to gain light from God's word and connect with the grace of the commission and God's servant. I obeyed, and to the glory of God, our church building was completed speedily by favor, and we have since moved in. Since then, I have been following everything about the commission online. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation Ministries Church, Ninja West Challenge, Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria. From Toyin, Balogun. Following the teachings of God's servant, I became a member of the commission. I joined the service group and became a kingdom practitioner. At my place of work, my boss hardly increases anyone's salary, but God favored me and protocols were broken. My salary was increased twice within six months. Secondly, I thank God for ad adding another year to my life. I return all the glory to God. Salvation Ministry Church, opposite Paradise Hostel, South Corp, Federal University of Agriculture, Makadi, Benue State, Nigeria, from Abba Hosanna. After my final exams, I was informed that almost everyone failed a particular course, and we were told to pay the lecturer to get a pass. My friend paid the money, but I stood my ground that I would not fail the course. I decided to sow the same amount of money to the glory ring 2024 and prayed about it. Our results came out, and the following Saturday, there was no carryover for me. In fact, I performed better compared to my first semester result. Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. Stand to your feet and give him all the glory. Shall we lift our hands to heaven? Magnify the King of all kings to glorify his name forever. Give him praise and glory. There's none like him forever is on the throne. Worthy to be exalted, worthy to be glorified. Blessed be his name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, you have come to this church service. Things will go well with you. Yes. These are more wisdom for greater exploits. You will never be found where things are not working. Yes. God will move you from one level of exploits to another. Yes. In the name of Jesus. The pain of past failure is what gives you passion for a great future. For a man willing to accept the truth. If you are never bothered of where you have failed, you will never have a change in position. I repeat, the pain of past failure is what propels you to have a passion for a great future if you are somebody who wants to change. Are you going to say now? I tested poverty, so I had the pain, and I said, no, a passion for prosperity came. Anywhere you have failed and you are ready for a change, God gives you a word. But if you begin to explain reasons why you failed, you will never change. Lord, give me a word. God's word in 2 Corinthians 3, 18 is to change us from one level of glory to another. If the word is not changing you, then you're not accepting the truth. If you accept the truth and look at where you failed, you say, no, I don't want to fail in this area again. He said, for we all with open faith behold as the glass of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Lord, I desire a change now. Is that what? 
to move from my past failures to super success. Whatever would have bring a change in my family, I desire it. There must be a word to bring a change. All you need is a word. Is there anything what? To bring a change in that area of your life. Are you ready for that word? Go ahead and pray to God in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to have a change in my family. My family can be where we used to be. Open your mouth and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Speak to God that you are ready to accept the truth. Thank you, Lord. In the name of you. God, just give me a straight word on the altar. It's as long as somebody keeps explaining your failures, you will never have any success. As I can say, I, I failed because, I failed because there cannot be a change. Change comes when you don't give excuse for your failures. And say, well, I failed in this area. Let me now decide what to do to bring a change. Is that true? As long as you don't accept it and you keep giving excuses, you can never have a better future. I pray today somebody will hear God's word and things will get better. Because change will only come when you accept the truth. Truth is truth, like it or not. Are you getting what I'm saying? It may sound hard. It may sound very bitter. But it's the truth. Truth cannot change. Civilization does not change truth. Technology does not change truth. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. It remains truth. And I know today somebody will accept the truth for a change of position. Yeah. Is that true? Are you willing to accept the truth? Yes. Somebody's life will turn after today. Yeah. Lord, send your word to us. We are ready to accept it as raw as it may sound for a change of story. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, breathe your breath upon the word for each one to have an encounter for our different families and our different in the name of Jesus. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. Slap your neighbor with high five. Tell him I celebrate you. We're in the month of wisdom for greater exploits. Today we're looking at wisdom for family progress, part three. Wisdom for family progress, part three. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the correct and timely application of knowledge. It is receiving what God says and applying it to your life. That's wisdom. While family is a group that consists of parents and their children living together as a unit. It comprises of the father, mother, the children, sometimes relatives and others that are dependents. That's what we mean by family. The word progress is simply process of improving or achieving a goal. So wisdom for family progress is the correct and timely application of God's word in order to achieve the goals and expectations you have for, the, for your family. All those are definitions. They are not deleting. Now here is an Yami well. The acceptance of the truth is the beginning of progress in the family. I repeat, the acceptance of the truth is the beginning of progress. Beginning of what? For the family. If you don't accept the truth, there will be, never pro- there will be no progress. The day you accept the truth, that where progress begins. So I hear. And there will be progress in your family. The key scripture for today's teaching is Proverbs chapter 24, 3 and 4. It said, through wisdom is a house builded, and understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Through wisdom, there are three striking words there. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. And verse 3 says, through wisdom, the house is talking about is not physical house, talking about true wisdom is a family, a home, a house built. Is that true? By understanding, there shall be stability. 
And then through knowledge, they will have everything they are looking for. Is that true, sir? Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Knowledge, understanding, and what? Wisdom. Every family, house, or home can only be successful when these three things at work. These three things must be there for any family to succeed, for any family to make progress. A, what is it? There is wisdom, understanding, but in the sequence, it has to be knowledge, understanding, wisdom. A is knowledge. A is what? Knowledge. Knowledge of the truth is the master key to a world of progress in the family. Knowledge of the truth. Yeah, it is the root of every problem in any family or home or marriage is ignorance. Is what? And that is the only tool the enemy will capitalize upon. He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth, the word truth means original information. Original what? So if you don't know the original information, you, are not, you can't be free from all the challenges. John 8.32 He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For lack of information. Hosea 4.6 don't let any devil deceive you. There's no substitute for knowledge. Get books on marriage and family by proven authors. By proven what? Not every author you buy his book. Those who have proofs. Shout hallelujah. Because it is knowledge that puts in command and gives you mastery over the issues of life. I hear this and hear me well. Do you know why marriages and families are having issues? This is it. If you notice, you don't have issues as such in your career because you took time to go through the career. You had knowledge. You went to school for 17 years. Primary school, Sunday school, college, university. Put all together so that's 17 years. You have relevant knowledge. Then they give you a paper course certificate. Is that true? So you have knowledge. So people last longer in their career than they last in their marriage. Because they have more knowledge in their career. Now, in the Western world, for you to drive, you don't just enter steering and drive. You go, they'll give you a course, theory. You go, they'll give you a book to read. You go, they'll do a test for you. The test does not guarantee that they'll give you lessons because you can fail the test. So, before you drive, they said, for us to put you on our road so you don't become a danger, you must go through this process. And many people at the end don't pass. So, don't have lessons. But when it comes to marriage, no test. They said, two of you want to marry? Sign. Yet, it, it is some people who stay for life. No knowledge. No what? So, cars stay longer than marriages. Because the man has knowledge of driving. He has knowledge of what? But he has no knowledge of marriage. Yet, he has entered into it. He has no knowledge of family, yet he's trying to raise a family. I pray today, somebody will seek knowledge in the name of Jesus. And knowledge is not a gift. You pay a price for it. You go to acquire knowledge. Go to what? Then number two, B, is understanding. Is what? So, if you look at it, say, get on getting prom uh, precious promises from God's word is not enough. You need desperate look for a clear understanding of what God is saying. So, I have to have not just the knowledge, I have to understand what the knowledge is talking about. Understanding simply means to be able to see what God is saying. To be able to see what God did. Understanding converts words into pictures. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Ephesians 1.18 he said, a man that wandered out of the world of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Proverbs 21, verse 16. So if I don't understand the Bible, I will suffer what sinners suffer. Do you understand what the Bible is saying? It, it, that you are in a class does not mean you understand the subject. Many of you failed. True? You even say paper when they wrote the exam. Because the facts you have is not commensurate for you to pass that exam. So, 
It's not enough to know. It's important you what? Understand. Yes, I know everything about marriage. Do you understand what marriage is? I know everything about the family. Do you understand what the family is? Have you not said somewhere, somebody was talking to you, and they said, okay, I understand, I see. Which means you were hearing before you didn't understand. So it's not enough to say, I know everything. It's not love your wife. Submit to your husband. Do you understand what love is? You know, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, 27, down to 30 something, about 30, 27 to about 39. You notice that Ethiopian eunuch was reading. Yet, Philip asked him, understand that what thou readest? He said, verse 30. He said, how can I? He said, so man, help me. So I asked, understand that what you're about to enter into in case you are not married yet. Or if you're in, understand that what marriage is. It has not to do with how many years you have been married. It's understanding. You have to read books. You have to read what? You have to read books. Verse 30 is the key verse. You have to read books. By proven, you have to go back to the word of God. Say here. Shout hallelujah. It's otherwise you will suffer what sinners are suffering. It's not enough to say, I, I know everything about marriage. If you read that scripture, God did not mention their kiss. So kissing cannot sustain marriage. If you see their sex is not inside, I like to sleep with woman, cannot sustain marriage. He said, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. If I can just get the woman I'll be sleeping with, the marriage will crash. Because it's not enough. I love you, baby. It will not last. He did not mention love, baby, there. I have someone not told you I love you, and then from the place two of you are wedding out, he said, you guy, you trusted me, you love, I don't want you anymore. But the person just said you test last night, I love you. So love is not enough. You must know it, understand it, and apply it. Shout hallelujah. Number three. Which you see is what? Wisdom. What is the third one? Oh, you are not flowing with me? What is the third one? See, wisdom. Wisdom of God is packaged in his book called the Bible. That's what wisdom of God is. Revelation and application of his word is what we call wisdom. Wisdom is simply doing what God says. Doing what what? That you know something does not mean you're wise. Does a doctor know smoking is dangerous? Hmm? But the doctor is smoking. Then it's what? It's foolish. So knowing scriptures is not wisdom. It is applying what? Scriptures. So I hear. That's Matthew 7, 24. He that hear the sense of mind, what? And, you, and wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 7, verse, 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the one thing that controls all other things. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? With that wisdom, you are lost. It is the correct application of knowledge. It is the correct application of what? It is the correct application of knowledge. How many persons have knowledge of marriage? You have knowledge? <laughs> then why are you calling it? How many understand marriage? Thank God you are truthful. So you are ready to learn? God bless you for telling truth. So don't deceive yourself. If you know the truth, the what you're going through, you won't go through it. So which means, it's, <laughs> when of us don't know. A lot of people have been sincere. Some people have even lied to themselves. It's like, nah, nah, nah. You don't know anything. If you know two of you won't be quarreling. That means the knowledge you have is not enough. You may know, but you don't have enough knowledge. 30% you still wrote. Even those who have 30, they wrote. Some people wrote full scam full like this. But the lecture will just say, not says 30. That means the information he has is, is not comprehensive enough. So here. So we're looking at wisdom keys 
for family progress. Wisdom what? For family progress. That's wisdom keys for progressive family. Wisdom keys for progressive what? Wisdom keys for family progress. We'll look at them and then I think we'll have about 10 of them and I'll take maybe as much as I can in this service and take the remaining ones in the next service. Glory to God. I'm virtually touching every area of the family. So here. There are 10 of them. I'm going to take at least as much as I can. Then the fourth service, I'll take the remaining one. These 10, I've actually touched every area. Every what? Even if it's one or two remaining, you can read from other materials. Wisdom keys. You know, God speaking, he said, I give unto you the keys. Plural. Matthew 16 verse 19. So there are keys that when you apply them, they must work. Number one, wisdom key. It is the first and oldest institution established by God. The family, which is the marriage, is the first and oldest institution established by who? By God himself. So here. It's not established by any government. It's by God himself. The marriage and family are not an experiment. The family is God's idea. And it will be wrong for you to go to government to know about the family. They are not the ones that established it. Hmm? Number two, second thing you should know, second thing you should know is that every family has an invisible enemy called Satan. Every family has what? An invisible enemy called who? Satan. Your home has an enemy called Satan. He said, resist the devil and he flee from you. What pleasures you infuriates the devil? Satan hates anything good. He hates what? So don't be ignorant. Don't be what? Exercise spiritual authority over the devil and his agents. Anything good, James 4, 7, that's where I quoted. Anything good, Satan will not like it. So if your family is making progress, he will want to corrupt it. So don't be ignorant not to know that Satan will not like anything it just stays. He wants to sow seed of this court. So you always be spiritually what? Sound. To say, Satan, get out here. Satan, do what? This is not your environment. You start spiritual what? Authority. He said, I give you power to tell of what serpents and what? And over all the powers of them, and not shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Number three. Be selective in the books you read and the things you watch, including the church you attend. I said, be selective as a family in the books what? You read, the things you watch, including the church you attend. So here, Create your library list on those who should influence your family. Should influence you. Are you kidding me, sir? In your library, there are certain books that should not be there. It is not every marriage conference you should attend. Choose a church that reflects your beliefs. Choose what? A church where they say men and men can marry. What are you doing there? Do you know a church that believes that men and men can marry? And you're in that church. Are you crazy? There are churches that wed men and men. Jesus did not come to establish a religion. He came to establish a kingdom. Do you hear me at all? In our kingdom, men and men don't marry. We have values. We have what? Number four. Establish a family altar. Establish what? How many of you have where you pray 
every day in your family? How many of you have such a place? Either in your room, your parlor, how many of you have? Tell your neighbor, you don't have anywhere you pray? Now listen. Every family must have, when I say altar, don't mean go to put rock, please. Family altar simply means a room, a room or a place where everybody goes to. Every family must have morning devotion. Every family must have what? At a particular time, everybody goes there to pray. Are you hearing me, sir? Family altar does not mean that you can put a rock and burn candle. That's not what I mean. No. I'm talking about where two or three are gathered together to pray. That's called family what? Altar. So because some people in family altar, don't you hear what Papa say? The word of God calls altar where two or three are what? Gathered to pray. So each morning and evening, in our family we have time. Everybody knows when to go there. Whether you're a visitor in the morning, the head of the house, the man, must tell them this time. Whether you are around or not, everybody must go there. Whether you are in town or not. Are you getting me? Set aside a particular specific place or room. Create a basic plan and pattern. Create a basic plan and what? So if it's 30 minutes, everybody knows 30 minutes we are done. We go. Is that through? Don't make it too long. It's not a church service. Are you hearing me? And don't go to the family altar and be preaching what two of you quarrel. <laughs> the day you are your husband quarrel, you now take that topic. He said, today I want to teach on how not to abuse. <laughs> That's not the place for that. Are you hearing me now? Shout hallelujah. Please, in case you don't have one, establish one. That's wisdom. That's what? So you can put the enemy far from your house. So here. Number five. Are you getting blessed? Some are longer, so I'm going to teach you the longer ones. Hmm? That number seven is very long. So I want to two and get to seven if I can. Number seven and number eight are very long. Number what? Five. Be discreet about your family challenges. Be discreet. Be what? About D I S C R E E T. Be discreet about your family challenges. I'm going to be very. Hear this, everybody. Never share your problems with those who do not have the ability to solve them. <laughs> Did you hear me at all? Young lady, you are having problem with your husband, all your friends are aware. Young man, you have challenge with your wife, all your family members are aware. You are very stupid. Very what? You have no sense. Don't share your family problems with people. Someone you are trusting is trusting someone you wouldn't want to hear about your problems. Are you in <laughs> I trust you. That's why I told you. That person will go and tell somebody who he or she trusts who you don't want that person to know. So don't share your problems with those who have, don't have the capability and capacity to solve it. Okay, the person you told, what would the person do? Silence can never be misquoted. Even if we see two of you having problems, as far as you don't talk, nobody can misquote. Mm? Let me say this to you. Never betray what your spouse shared with you in confidence with any person. I repeat. Never betray what your spouse shared with you in confidence with what? Your wife, your husband told you something in confidence. Don't go and betray the person. Do you know what my wife told me? This is what she said. Don't do that. Do you know what my husband told me? He said so. Don't tell anybody. Else. Don't do it. Discretion is the proof of loyalty. Is the proof of what? Loyalty. Let me ask you a question. Brothers and sisters, 
Who are you taking counsel from concerning your family? <laughs> Who are you taking counsel from concerning what? Your marriage and family. A psychologist? Who is in the third marriage? How can someone in the third marriage cancel you? Why talk to a spiritualist with elemental spirits about your family? He will compound and complicate issues for your family. Because the spirit is working with is not of God. I don't want to. Most of you now, an online relationship coach who you know nothing about is who you're confining your mind. You don't know anything about him. He's an online coach. Do you know anything about his marriage? Online relationship coach. Nonsense. Go to the word of God. Go to where? Or your pastor or a strong, knowledgeable, and disciplined believer. A strong what? I pick my words. A strong, knowledgeable, and disciplined. There are things I hear in this church, as close as my wife is, she will not hear it. Because, not because it's not necessary for her. I don't need to worry her mind with such. Are you getting me now? There are some things people will tell me because of my position on family, nobody will I share with. It's not necessary for any third year. Because I, did, I was told as a pastor, it's left for me alone. But are people so disciplined that they will not share with somebody? Even pastors, not every pastor should meet for counseling. There are pastors who you have to, they say, don't tell anybody. It's against ethics. There are three professions that the moment you do that, nobody will respect your profession. A lawyer, a doctor, and a pastor. A lawyer should be discreet. Because legal profession, the person tells you, I did this. If a lawyer, your lawyer ever share a confidential information you gave to him, never patronize him again. Blacklist him and say, this lawyer is a useless lawyer. If you go to a doctor and told him something very common, he hear it outside, blacklist that doctor. If you go to a man of God, a woman of God, and you told that pastor, I told you because, and the pastor, they don't ever, that, that is useless, not qualified to be a pastor. Our profession demands we are discreet. You hear a lot and talk nothing. Are you hearing me? The person you must be discreet, the person you are sharing, does he have the capacity to solve your family problem? So I hear. So don't ever share your problems with those who don't have the answers to solve them. Say so here. Are you getting me? You ask yourself. If you know we don't have anybody, two of you sit down with the word of God. And say, let's read books. Our problem is inside these books. We will find answer. We will find answer here. My wife comes, sit here. Take this book. Me too, I take this one. Look, we read. There's no way two of you will not see where you're missing it. Is that true? Are you getting me? I pray every family will have peace. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. And number six, because I'll try, because I don't want the fourth service to be too long. Because two, top, two particular subjects are very long. Invest time in training your children. Invest time in training your what? Children. See where you got it wrong and put it together. In Proverbs 22 verse 6, it said, train up. Train what? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The word train, if you not train, train is the head, not the child. The other ones are called coaches. The head of the family is the man. The, God is saying, the man should take the first initiative. We think that only women. No, no, no. God is saying, the man. Do you know if a family, the man is dedicated, the should be dedicated. Check very well. Any family where the man is dedicated, all children will be dedicated. But if the wife alone is dedicated, the child will never be dedicated. Because the man is the role. Don't tell your children, go to church. Say, let's go to church. Take the lead. Your children will go to church. But if the man doesn't go to church, and he says, my wife take her to church, 
your sons will one time not go. Say, after you do go to church. When they are big, they will challenge you to face. Say, say you, do you go to church? Train them the way you want them to be. If you don't want them to drink, don't, don't drink. If you don't want them to smoke, don't smoke. Anything you don't want them to do, don't do it. Don't say one thing and do the other. Shout hallelujah. Train them. Now we have a problem. It's happening also in Nigeria. Where people get up in the morning, go to work, close in the night, don't have time for children. We are, that's why the whole world is having a problem with children. They say, no, 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 no. We, we, we have to rush for money. If you look at the Western world, children have gone haywire. The mother will go to work in the morning, come back home by 10 p.m. The children don't have any home training. Father will go to work in the morning, come back by 11 p.m. Two of them sleep tired. They wake up tired. They enter road again. Monday to some Monday to Sunday. In the name of looking for a dollar. And pounds. So children are left alone. A child left alone to himself will bring a reproach to the parents. It's better you train them now. You think a waste is investment of time for training is not a waste of time. Parents don't train children anymore. Oh, you need to go to the Western world. At least here is entry to about do you know children don't know how to greet in the Western world? They see they say hi. You call me hi? Am I your mate? You can't tell me hi, I answer you. They call even the parents by their names to tell you how poor it is. They say, Mike, that's his father. They say, Mike, how you doing? His father. He's calling his father what? Mike. So he ends up as a microphone. <laughs> he said, that's, that, that's Momsy. Evelyn, how are you doing? That's his mother. Evelyn, you're good? His mother. <laughs> he said, honor thy mother and thy what? So he said, mother. Evelyn, how is, how's your husband? How's Mike doing? That's his father. You mean your husband? Mike is okay? Okay, all right, all right. It's not civilization, eh? It's wrong. The Bible is universal. I got to America and somebody was talking, this is America. I said, is there any American Bible? Bible is Bible everywhere. Bible is what? Do you know they like respect in the Western world? How do I know? A child from this commission said he greets his professors like this. The first thing they told him, they said, you came from a train home. He said, good morning, sir. But other ones would just say, how are you, prof? <laughs> <laughs> so everybody loves respect. Copeland came to Nigeria. And when he got to the airport, they said, Papa Copeland, Daddy Copeland. He said, Nigerians are very respectful. But in America, they say, hi, hi, Brock Copeland. Somebody calling Brock Copeland is his grandson. <laughs> Not him, his own biological grandson. That's the mate of his grandchildren. They say, hey, Copeland, how you doing? But he came to Nigeria, and said, ah, Papa Copeland. They didn't even call, they said, Papa, welcome. They were bowing their head. They said, what? Nigerians are very respectful. I went to Houston, Texas, and some children came and said, hi. I said, come here. <laughs> I said, sit down here. I said, who are you calling hi? <laughs> Me, hi. I said, sit down here, my friend. By the time I finished talking to them, their heads became correct. So you came to America to tell me hi. You tell me hi in America, no matter who you are, once are you? I'll snub you. To call me hi. Am I your mate? <laughs> hi. This Bible is universal. Universal what? Train your children, otherwise there will be problems to you tomorrow. Don't look for money at the expense of your children. Who is going to inherit that money? Well, I can't go to the seventh one, which is very important. Talk about family finance together. Talk about what? Hey, I thought I could take this seven. That's the one I really wanted to take in this service. Because I have finance and communication as two long topics. Oh my God. Mm. Well, fourth service, get the message. It's very loaded. Family, what? You know why? Do money talk regularly. Do money talk what? 
Don't push it on that carpet. The greatest source of quarrel, stress, divorce, misunderstanding, horse, pressure in the house is the issue of money. Is the issue of, don't pretend. The issue of money is the reason for most divorce, most quarrel, most stress, most problems, especially when it is inadequate to meet the needs of the family. Check where you had problem in your marriage. It has to do with money. Mm? In most cases, in what? So, we'll talk about it in the fourth service. I don't want to go into it. I won't be able. We'll talk about some aspects you consider in handling family finance. Money. How do you handle money? Hmm? We'll talk about it. It's a long teaching, but very important. Very what? A man of God said, very, very important. You know, people don't talk about it. <laughs> they don't talk about it. You do know. I will talk about it. Do you know that you have to be disciplined as a family in how you spend money? You have to invest money. I'm telling you. You have to invest what? You must budget. As money comes, that's how I spend. You are very useless. You must have a budget. For service. Every adult in the family must be doing something. If the family, people are idle, they will put pressure on the person who is working. I've, from studies, I've known that everybody not working does not know how to spend money. Read. I'm a reader. If you check anybody who does not work, they are heavy wasters. They don't know how to spend money. Check your brother who is not working. He will demand from you what you who is working will never ask. He wants to use a phone you don't have. You ask your brother, buy me an iPhone 15. You say, you don't have work iPhone 15. You say, yes, it's the latest phone. He's doing nothing. Give him money, he will be broke in two weeks. Because when you earn money, you're always prudent. Check all of you who are working. When they give you money, you are prudent because you know how to earn it. So I'll teach you how your family, everybody must be productive, including your wife. Don't say because you're rich, your wife should sit in the house as chief housewife. She will put pressure on you because she doesn't know how to earn money. Your wife must be working. So when you give her money, she knows that when she went to work for 30, 20 days, out of 30 days, they paid her 160,000. So if you now give us 100,000, you say, so the whole 20 days, 160, must not give me 600. I have to use it very well. But if you just, she doesn't work, you give us 600. He say, so with all the money we get, that's 600. And family will come under pressure. So I will teach you in the fourth service. Oh! Rise to your feet. Shout Hallelujah. Are you blessed? How many of you are blessed? Ooh. I'll teach you in the first service. Enemies of family finance. Enemies of what? Like impulse buying. Anything you see, just buy. Anything you see, just no budget. You see, because money is in your pocket. Because you have money in your pocket. You say, this Holland is bring up. My husband go pay. <laughs> now you get up. My husband go pay. You get money. Before you buy the Hollandis, tell your husband so that you don't put him under pressure. It's called impulse what? You just have put money in your pocket. Anything you see, say bring, 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 bring. Then when the money is going to the end, it's start calculating. I wish I have this. You wish, the money you wish has passed your hand. You wish, I would have done business so. But calculate how much passed through your hand that you used to buy nonsense. Some of you, the recharge card alone is enough to start phone call, to start business. In a month, some of you buy up to 50,000, 80,000 airtime. 80 times 12. Some of you use, not business, so just to talk. Hello, 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 50,000. Hello, 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 70,000. Hello, 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 80,000. 80 times 12. Calculate is enough to start a, a, a telephone business. My wife, my consultant, 80 times 12 is how many? <laughs> eh? 960. 
Okay. 960. You're looking for capital. Thank you. All right. We'll talk. You know, some of the things. Did you, did you see prayer here? To my prayer. Devil, devil, devil. Devil self. If he was to report you to God, he would tell God, say, God, I'm not there for their trouble. <laughs> it's lack of wisdom. Lack of what? Some of you blaming the devil. The devil is there. So say, God, I know I'm a bad devil, but do, this trouble is not the cause. <laughs> These people are not, are not prudent. They're not what? See what it says here. It said, there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But the foolish man spent it on sir. What? The foolish person spend every money they have. They are always broke. Always what? No reserve. I was told and I saw that even Jesus knew the importance of investment. He said, look, keep your reserve with Judas. In case we need something, collect from Judas to buy. You don't have any reserve. No back account, no nothing. No now. Appa. No reserve. So any very small thing. Oh God, we believe God. We believe God. We believe God. We believe God. Don't believe God like that. <laughs> Correct is your brain. Oh, yeah, let's pray. <laughs> I said knowledge, oh, so go and buy these things. Don't do like this. Don't do like this. We don't know that these books are sold. He said knowledge. What did I say? Get these things. This is what you need. Get them. Don't say, I don't need it. I don't need it. You need it. Don't, look, before you marry, read all these books. Before you say, yes, I do. Because you read books in your career. You read books for that profession. Read books so before you marry for two years, then you say, I don't need this marriage. I don't, I don't, I don't need this marriage. My husband is a demon. My wife, hmm, she sent me my mate. <laughs> you get knowledge. Get what? We are going to pray. You cast out Satan from corrupting the godly character of our children. Pray that our children will develop strong moral character that is grounded in God's word and reflecting God's love in their actions. In my name shall cast out devils. Matthew, Mark 16, verse 17. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16. You have seen the scriptures. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make the wise unto salvation through faith, which is a character. You can read all that at home. Now you're going to cast out, look at, the, look at the prayer point. You cast out Satan from corrupting the godly character in our world. Children. This is for children. Pray that our children will develop strong moral character that's grounded in God's world. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Pray for our children in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Mark 11 to the one, Peter, remember, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree without corset is without away. Mark 11 to the one. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. The easy to read version, but the King James version is even enough. Bring the King James. There's no point using the easy to read. But easy to read version said, An enemy might be able to defeat one person, but two people can stand back to back to defeat, to defend each other. And three people are even stronger. They are like a rope that has three parts wrapped together. It is very hard to break. A three-four core cannot be broke. Cause the root of seasonal quarrels and misunderstanding, posing a threat to your marriage. Ask God to continually strengthen and unite your marriage in love, protect your relationship from strife, discord, and what? Temptation. Are you seeing these prayer points? 
Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Pray the same prayer point for your family. Just change the marriage to your family, whatever it is. Pray for your marriage and pray for your family. Cause every planting of the devil. Every strife and discord, cause them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In all services, I pray the prayer in Psalm 68, verse 6, the NIV. The Bible declares, it says, it said, no, Psalm 68, I said it now, verse 6. We use it always, what's wrong? God says the lonely in what? Families. Lonely simply means those who are single. It's not good for a man to be alone. So he brought a woman to him. Lonely means somebody who is not married. That's many. Now God is saying, it's good for those who are not married to have what? Families. So how many single people want to marry? Now I decree based on that scripture. Every single that say, I don't want to be lonely. I decree by this administration. Get married in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your husband, your wife will find you after now. Amen. All the forces that stood against you getting married, they are broken and destroyed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Tell me, I will get married. Say it one more time. I will have my own family. In case you're standing for your children, you're standing for your grandchildren, you're standing for your sister, brother, the same grace goes to all of them. In the name of Jesus. Give thanks to God for his word. Give him thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus. In the second service, I said something. Please, there's a trend in our society where these days people marry men and men, women and women. Even in the church, women are following women, men are following men. Please, it's not scriptural. It's ungodly, satanic, and demonic because of time. Please, there is no man and woman. There is no woman and woman. It's not in the Bible. It's against the scriptures. If in case you are, you are looking for somebody, look for a woman to marry. Stop going for your fellow woman inside church. Please, they don't do that in the kingdom. Yeah? Leviticus, let me show you because it's important. Leviticus 18.22, New Living Translation. Use New Living Translation. New Living Translation, gentleman. Leviticus 18.22, are you there? It said, do not practice what? Read it, want to go? It repeated in, in, in Leviticus 20.13, the same thing. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man, as with a woman, both on her community. No, the things is repeated. So then, you know, this is not a lot. I'm not if you like tattoo. You like tattoo. See what the Bible says about tattoo. Leviticus 19:28, the same living translation. Leviticus 19:28. Do not cut your bodies for the dead, as not, and do not mark your skin with what? Am I do? Are you seeing it? Stop putting tattoo on your body. It's not scriptural. And those of you who are practicing, looking for your fellow woman, please go to another church. How can you be looking for your fellow woman? No, no, it's not biblical. Don't do it again. It's against the Bible. It's against what? Don't look for your fellow man. All the women you did not see, your fellow man is who you see inside church. Are you demonic? In fact, you are not demon possessed. You are or man they possess. They are what? Possess. Those of you from the foreign world find out what Obanje is. Obanje is simply Oban, that is EJ. <laughs> <laughs> How can somebody look for your fellow man? The thing is is one kind of. So you mean man go touch your fellow? Look at you now. Man, do you know when a man touches you like some paper? Do you know? Just check your wife. A woman touch you. You see the body will be soft if you're a man. Just imagine a man with your fellow man. Yeah! When a man touches you, you don't feel it. There's no feeling in this world. 
So you now, you now look at a man, then be, be, be lying a fellow man like this. Eh? <laughs> Let me say this to all of us, because of time. No matter a man changes his physique, he's a man. Because woman simply means a man with a womb. So even if he has breasts, he does not have a womb. That's why he cannot have children. So he's a man. If you like, let him do his waist big, his, his breasts come out. He is a man because he has no womb. Womb is what they call woman. Man with a womb. Since he has no womb, he's a man. If you like, go change yourself. Get breasts. He be wear breasts. He be man. And woman, if you like, go do everything. Take artificial one, put there. You be woman. Because they ne- they've, science has not been able to put that to inside you, so you be woman. Now. When you remove your clothes, what do you carry? <laughs> it's from me, you want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, take, take, your, take my own and put there. It'd like, it be, it be woman. Okay, which woman don't pregnant a fellow woman? All this is a demonic perversion. Satanic. Are you okay in your head? Don't bring it to, to the kingdom of God. Take it to the devil. If, you, if we look, anybody see practicing man and man, call and say, oh boy, he, he craze. Don't hide it. Go to the person and say, my friend, he craze. Madness, what are you? Man and man. Yeah. Something to worry you. All right, let's stop here. Time is gone. But if you are not born again, you don't belong to any family. Now come to the family of God. Come to the family of God by being born again. That's where the family journey starts. Give your life to Jesus and your life will change. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If all Father prayers keep standing, and then one other take their seats. I hear God. If I tell you something, God, somebody while I was talking was very angry. And God said to me, warn the person. When I'm sharing truth, someone said, Nadiolati will be seen. And it's a lady who said it. I hear God. Oh. He's warning you if you don't, if you think I'm not, I don't hear God. Say it again. If you don't carry play, God did not call me. I to be a plague that no man of God can kill. When, I, when I'm talking like this, be careful. Under the Holy Spirit of God. A woman said, what is it? Is it the only thing that he will talk about? A woman said when I was teaching tight, I spoke. That woman got a point she couldn't have 20 dollars to eat. My wife, she came to beg money to eat. She was very rich. I was teaching on tight. It's a nonsense. I'm not going to teach. After she finished, she came to beg food to eat. Please, when I'm under the unction of the Holy Ghost... You can talk to David Ibiomia, but if you talk when I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit, for God to tell me he's warning you, say it again. If you don't carry play, God did not call me. I heard him say, warn the person. I'm not talking my Bible. I talk his Bible. And it's his word. Say, so if you don't like it, keep quiet. Don't say, what is he talking about? I didn't preach my word. I preached his word. So you're not challenging me, you're challenging this word. And nobody challenge this word and go free. Please, in case you are the sister saying that, correct yourself now. Are you hearing me? I've heard truths that I don't like. I didn't challenge the man of God. Even me, I've heard truths I don't like. But I didn't say, why is the man of God talking like that? It's the truth. And I took it. And I corrected myself. Is that true? Don't get angry with the truth. Truth is truth. Take it or leave it. It's sin. No matter what, no matter what we do, it is what? Sin. So sin is sin. If you like polarize it, it is sin. If it was your first time, please get up. <laughs> this is your first time to fellowship with us, please. Can you stand? We want to welcome you. This is your first time to fellowship with us. Kindly stand. We want to welcome you. You're welcome to Salvation with the Home of Success. We love you. Keep coming to this family and your life will never remain the same. Those around the table will celebrate you and they will want shake. Now listen. No family or individual can prosper without giving quality seed. 
Their seed that scattered and yet increased it. And their seed that will open the spirit to the party. Until something leaves your hand, nothing will leave heaven to change your life. A seed of nothing is a season of nothing. God, you know, I don't, I don't have. It's also a season of God. No, give me anything. But for those who want to change their position and their family, package what you know will change the family's resources. Take a point of contact for your family to come out of that stress. Enough of the family going through stress. Pay your tithe. Package other kingdom investment. Lift it up to heaven. And say, Father, as I drop this seed, let heaven respond. In the name of Jesus, for a change of story for me and the family. In the name of Jesus. If you're given electronically, follow the instruction on the screen. They'll give you the different details. Transfer it to any of those mediums and pay. While choir in all churches, you will minister during the break for the fifth service. Please give me, take the information on the screen one side and put me one side. Put it one side and put it one side. No, not like this. Put it one side. If every day they have to tell you to do something, then you are not wise. Put, oh my God. Put my picture one side and put the information on one side. Simple. If every day somebody has to tell you to do something, you are not wise. An instruction given to you twice means you are stupid. Tuesday's home set. Tuesday's what? Home set. Sorry, sorry. Home fellowship. You see the mind? So some of things you think you have changed, you are still battling with it. Home fellowship on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Last week you went because they gave you food. This week, please go. Last week you went to take rice, take beans, take everything. Please, this week too, go for the world of God. Thursday is living error free. Living error free. That's the message, 5 p.m. Sunday is a special anointing service. Come with your oil. Be the last Sunday in the month of April. We'll have anointing section after teaching. And God bless you. Vision, operation, one week, one soul. See, continuous, bring them to church. If you have given offering, rise to your feet. If you have not given, sit down to give. <laughs> Remember to get the materials, knowledge. What did I say? Marriage and family series. We have them complete. And all, we have them in flight drive. All of them are in one flight drive like this. And also we have all the books and tapes also. Go and carry. Go and what? If you have family that is going through stress, just give them this material. Say, please, this is all I have to give to you. Two of you, go and sort your matter together. Raise your hands to heaven. Nobody who is a part of this service will see shame. Amen. Your children will never be a concern to you. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. And may you be refreshed this week. Amen. Everywhere you go this week, favor will answer to you. Amen. Those who came sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare you blessed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet love of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. God bless you.
Hallelujah. You are joyful to be in this fourth service. Why not give the Lord the joyful shout of praise? Hallelujah. For those at the global headquarters who believe God has blessed your families with testimonies, kindly go behind the success story. Our personal officials waiting to document your testimonies. God's words being Psalm 119, verse 144b. Give me understanding and I shall live. We will lift up our voice and appreciate God for His understanding coming our way that will make us to enjoy and come on progress. Raise the voice and appreciate Him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you for the understanding of your word coming our way. We give you the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Is the faithful God give him thanks. Give you praise. 
glory in Jesus most wonderful name with a big hand clap to Jesus may please be stead in God's presence Papa said in his book the blessed family he said you can never succeed in marriage without being committed to the word of God it's testimony time put your hands together for Jesus as we invite Teresa Oba Luke Isaac Samuel Precious and David and David for their testimonies while they come please pay careful attention to the following information a very warm welcome to this awesome service Visit the Knowledge Center or e-store at smhos4.com immediately after the fourth service to obtain today's message and all the messages in hard copy and flash drive. Or subscribe to our only collections on MP3 and DVD. Amongst the materials are message, April 2024, week of spiritual empowerment, praise for greater exploits, glory reign 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books that warn us of wisdom, wisdom for creativity, wisdom for family peace, wisdom quotes volume one, wisdom quotes volume two, wisdom to see ahead, winning with ease and the winning mentality. Help your children possess the right knowledge of godliness and excellence in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation by visiting the Wisdom Bank today or call the number as displayed. The knowledge of God's word puts you in command over all things. Salvation World of Life Bible Institute presents our first session of the International Basic Certificate Course for the month of May 2024. Basic Certificate Course will be both live and online for countries with GMT plus one or minus one time zones to participate. Nigeria in close save. Pastors hosting Bible School should please announce at their branches. School begins on Monday, 6th and ends Friday, 17th of May, 2024. Please note, school fee scholarship is available for students who cannot afford it. For registration, visit wobi.smhos.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. To commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offering, send your seed to the account as displayed. Oakma International Academy in Junior and College announces admission into pre-kindergarten primary 1 to 5 and year 7 GSS 1 for 2024-2025 academic session. Applicants are to fill and submit an online application form at okma.org.ng. Note, applicants for the college must be 10 years by September 2024. For entrance examination dates, venues and all the details, please visit okma.org.ng or call any of the numbers as displayed. Those are desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. There will be service group prayers on Friday, 26th of April, 2024, for children ministry, peacekeepers, and foreign language units at the King Marina for those at the Global Headquarters at 5 p.m. All concerned should fast before coming. What baptism hosts immediately after this service, while live foundation class for new converts and believers hosts tomorrow Monday by 5 p.m. and on Saturday by 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. respectively at the Global Headquarters and all our branches globally. The class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure. Please come with your writing materials. Pregnant and expectant models meeting hosts on Wednesday, 24th of April, 2024 at the Global Headquarters by 5 p.m. In preparation for Mother's Day Celebration 2024, women at the Global Headquarters will meet immediately after the fourth service at the main auditorium. To receive daily prayers, prophecies and wisdom quotes for living, like, share and follow David Ibiomie on Facebook, at David Ibiomie on Instagram, at David underscore Ibiomie, X at David Ibiomie. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and testimony. My name is Luke Isaac, and my testimony is on God's faithfulness. I thank God for adding an eye to my age. I came to give God all the glory. I'm 40 years old. Your name and testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is David at David. I've come to return back all the glory to God. There's a particular message that Papa preached about a business, and um, he made mention of... Um, um, boat app. So I went home that day, I meditated on God's word, and God gave me... Um, an idea to start up my own business. I didn't have money, I didn't have any certification, so I took the idea out, I told people about it, to God be the glory, the company got registered, and I've come back to return of the glory because more um, documentations I needed for the company to grow, God provided it for me. On Thursday too, I came to um, give testimony about my contract, here it is, I've come to return back all the glory to God. Praise the Lord. Your name and testimony. My name is Teresa Oba. Um, 
I'm testifying on God's faithfulness. And um, last week, I was uh, called from Abuja, from my headquarters. I've been believing God for promotion. And also wrote it in my expectation form. I also keyed into Papa's word that we are going to celebrate as um, Salvation Ministry is celebrating. So I last week they called and they asked me a few questions that they are considering to promote me. And I was happy. So on Friday, which was three days ago, I was sent an email that I've been promoted in my office. So give thanks to the Lord. Your name and testimony. My name is Sam Precious. Um, I'm just fine on healing. Last night, I was having headache and um, kata. But before I went to sleep, I said to God that as I step my foot in church today, I will receive my healing. And I'm, now I'm okay and no kata. And secondly, last year, I passed, God made me to pass my, jam, my YEC exam. And God did it for me. And I pray that I believe. Okay. God is faithful. God grant her excellence in our, in our work. She's here to give God all the glory. God is faithful as a doer. Please stand to your feet and give him all the glory. Father, we thank you for all these testimonies. We return the glory back to you in Jesus' mighty name. You may please have your seats. It's offering time. Papa said, in this kingdom, it is impossible for a stingy man to be richer than a liberal man. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25a, the Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tended to poverty. In 25a, it says, The liberal soul shall be made fat. So package your best. Your quality offerings. Remember your tithes. Your prophet offerings. Remember your kingdom promotion seeds. Cathedral and church planting seeds and all other kingdom investments. If you have done that, leave them above your heads and speak to your seed. Faithful God, we thank you for this privilege to sow seeds into your kingdom. Accept our seeds and bless us richly in the name of Jesus Christ. Those online, you can follow the short codes on the screen. You may cast your seeds.
In Salvation World of Life Bible Institute, we honor those sisters and above that attend Bible school. Let's welcome our Father to present gift to Amadi Faith. Your voice and worship him. Lord, we worship you. We give you a praise in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated. This section will be going to God in prayers. In Psalm 72, verse 18, blessed be the Lord God, the God of salvation ministries, who only doeth wondrous things. Thank God for the success of our four awesome services today. His grace and strength released upon David Ibiumi, and for his word released to bless every family connected globally. Stand to your feet, lift your voice and magnify the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are here to say thank you. He said, blessed be the Lord God, the God of salvation ministries, who only doeth wondrous things. We thank you for the success of our four awesome services today. We thank you for your grace and strength released upon your servant, David Ibiumi. We thank you for your word released to bless every family connected globally. Lord, we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, John 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. First Kings 5 verse 4. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, so that is neither adversary nor evil or current. Clear Satan from attacking the peace and progress of salvation ministries through enemies this season and beyond. Establish all our rest and growth for her. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said the thief cometh not, but for to steal, but for to kill, but for to destroy, but for that same purpose, the Son of God, Jesus, was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil, we are prayed to destroy, we are prayed to frustrate every device of the devil, to attack the peace, to attack the progress of salvation missions, to enemies of Forever, this is now beyond the blood of Jesus. It's against your works. We establish all our rest, all our peace, all our growth. For. In Jesus' mighty name, Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Pray to destroy every evil targeted at David E.P. and his family this new week and beyond. Decree they will enjoy all and peace and possession of life. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said, The enemy shall not accept upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him, for no weapon from the against him shall prosper. We pray to destroy every evil targeted at David Ibiome, targeted at Peace Ibiome, targeted at David the son, that genuine love for us, this week and beyond the blood of Jesus, knowledge. Find such evil, we clear every evil targeted against him, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Zechariah 9 and verse 14. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. Pray against every evil program, against Jenny worshippers in salvation of ministries this season. Establish total peace, absolute comfort, and continuous advancement for all. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said a thousand shall fall at the side, ten thousand at the right hand, it shall not come near us, for no weapon from the against you and I shall prosper. We pray against every evil program against Jenny Watchmas in salvation ministries. This season to corrupt your joy. We cancel such evil by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't say the Lord. It shall not stand, neither shall it go to pass. Every evil programmed against you, against your love force, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Finally, Philippians 2 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Use the name of Jesus Christ against anyone or force resisting the blessings, promotions, appointments, and breakthroughs of all families represented in salvation ministries globally. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name of power will take authority in the name that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we clear every force resisting our blessings, resisting our promotions, resisting our appointment and breakthroughs. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we command us for be rolled away, we clarify by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I appreciate him as I was. Father, we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated as we call on the officials to read the online testimonies across the globe. Salvation Ministries Church, number 28, Rumo Calabar Road, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. From Nodi, Dule, Celestine. For two weeks, I had a blurry vision in my left eye, and that gave me a great concern. During the special online miracle service on Friday, the 12th of April, 2024, God's servant mentioned a case of someone almost going blind in the left eye. I received the prophetic declaration in faith because that was my exact case. To the glory of God, my left eye has been made whole as the right eye. Secondly, God sustained my life as I turned 37 on Sunday, the 14th of April, 2024. Thank you, gracious Father and compassionate ophthalmologist. Salvation Ministry Church number 62 Angbara Road of Olubi Street, Ikorodu, Lagos State, Nigeria. From Mrs. Emeka, our daughter was booked for a heart surgery due to a hole in the heart. 
On the day of the surgery, the doctor said the surgery will not hold due to complications that might arise, stating other underlying health challenges. We engaged the God of this commission in prayers and went in for the surgery. As soon as it was over, all the fears and concerns the surgery had were miraculously handled. Our daughter is now healed and hearty, and I return all glory to God. Salvation Ministries Church, number 15, Omereji Street, Oko Filling Station, Igando, Lagos State, Nigeria, from Bridget Okonji. For about two weeks in March 2024, I felt terribly ill. I could neither walk nor move, and I had intense nausea. I was unable to do anything myself. During one of the Sunday services that same month, I connected online, and during the healing ministration at God's servant prophesied, I connected in faith for my healing. That same day, I could finally get up on my own without the aid and without vomiting. I give God all the glory. Salvation Ministries Church, number 5, Freetown Street Town, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. From Helen Alex. My daughter went into labor on the 2nd of April, 2024, but had prolonged labor. While heading to the hospital to visit her, I carried my anointing oil blessed by God's servant. Upon arrival, I saw her lifeless. Immediately, I anointed her and prayed, calling on the God of Salvation Ministries, and she jacked back to life. Furthermore, on the 6th of April, 2024, she gave birth to a bouncing baby girl. Thank you, Jesus. The God of the voice world with great testimonies. Rise to your feet and give him back the glory. And magnify the King of all kings and glorify his name forever. Let's go ahead and give thanks to him from the death of our heart. Let's appreciate him that's not like him forever is on the throne. He is worthy to be glorified, worthy to be honored. Blessed be God forever in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In life, what you hear determines what you become. And what you hear determines what you're willing to change. If you don't hear God's word, you become nothing. Change takes place not by with time. Change takes place with the truth. Time does not bring change. It's true that brings change. He says, you shall know the truth. This is, you shall know the time. So, Lord, I desire, and the truth is the word of God. Original information. Lord, I desire to have an encounter with your word. Let your word bring a change in my life. I desire a change from where I am to where I ought to be. Reveal the truth to me in this service concerning the family. Go ahead and speak to God in the name of Jesus. Are you talking to God for wisdom? That will change your story completely in the name of Jesus. I desire to have an encounter with the truth for a change. I desire a change. I desire to move forward. Talk to God this moment. He will give you an answer to the desires of your heart. The change you are looking for is just an encounter with his word. Time doesn't bring change. It's the truth that brings change. We are changed to the same image by the Spirit of God. Somebody will have an encounter with the truth this hour for a change of story. In the precious name of Jesus. You will not leave this service the way you came. Something better will happen to you. The truth will bring transformation and you will never be the same after now. In the precious name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us through your word. Let your word transform our own world. In the name of Jesus, make us better Christians after this encounter. In Jesus' mighty name. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. From the first service, if I hear God's word, God's servant from Ghana, was my, he was my best man during my wedding. He's been here from the first service. Most of you know him, Pastor Richard Apia of Water of Life Ministries, Accra, Ghana. You're welcome. God bless you. And then we're in Bible school together. He's a Ghanaian 
with Nigerian understanding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Desire is very powerful. We are talking, they said, do you know when they said they wanted to marry in class, I prayed to God, I said, let me be his best man. I said, and I turned, I said, Richard, you'll be my best man. He said, God answered his prayer that day. <laughs> he has always seen me as his elder brother. So, God is faithful. Post Richard. You're welcome. God bless you. Now, hear this. This month is declared a month of wisdom for greater exploits. But we're looking at wisdom for family progress, part four. Wisdom for family progress, part four. Four. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. It's been a wonderful service from the first to now. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing which way to go and getting there. Wisdom is simply knowing the truth and applying the truth you know. When we talk about family, we're talking about a group that consists of parents and their children living together as a unit. Comprised of the father, the mother, the children, sometimes relatives and other dependents. Progress simply improving or achieving a goal. And life is supposed to be progressive because Proverbs 4, it is a part of the just shall light that shall the more the perfect day. So, life is not supposed to be static or stagnated. God expects you and I to keep improving, even as families, from one level to another. So, wisdom for family progress is the correct application of God's word in order to achieve the goals and expectations you have for your family. I said something in the third service, and I repeat, the acceptance of the truth is the beginning of success in the family. And progress in the family. The acceptance of what? Not the truth. The acceptance. Because you can get truth and not accept it. I repeat. I, I picked my word. I wrote it in my notes. The acceptance of what? The truth is not what makes the family progress. No. The acceptance. Because I can get the truth and not accept it. Hello. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can hear truth. Truth does not bring a change. Is the acceptance of what? Now, it came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him. So it's not enough to hear the truth. You must accept the truth for a change. Is that clear, sir? I can be talking now, and you just blank out. Say so anything like, let him talk. I'm not interested. You will never change. You know? So where you're seated is not as bad as where you receive the truth. You know, you can stay in a place and say, it's like, let him talk anything he likes. So when he's finished, he's, I just go my way. You will never change. It is the acceptance of what? I want it about truth is that you won't like it, but you must accept it. Champions do what they hate to get what they want. I we were in class, Pastor Richard was there, and one day Bishop Edekbo came to class and said, Listen, you want to be a great pastor? Sit down at your assignment. If you move from one place to another, you can never be a great pastor. That was not my pattern. I like to move. Before then in Lagos, I would like to drive from Victoria Island to KJ, KJ. But that was the truth. They said you can never be a great pastor moving from Shumoli to Banega. Sit down at your assignment. Any pastor who likes moving can never be a great pastor. That was the truth. And I accepted it. And it's showing now. Is that true? If I said nonsense, it's because God has blessed me. He's coming to tell us to sit down. Does not know that I have to preach to get money. I would have seen me preaching till now without money. The truth is the truth. Take it or leave it. Truth is bitter. But the bitter truth will make life better. So I hear. <laughs> you know, why you know something is truthful is that it will hit you like this. Boom. For what? Do you know, if you like women, and you talk about women, you won't like it. So no little women go to talk about for church. And woman, woman. You know, we we'll talk about how we we'll take care of money and a woman. That's the area God wants you to change. If you like that, you are the type that like, like, you don't like paying tight. They say pay tight. He said it's only tight if he has to preach. Or very tight, tight. You know, they talk about heaven. That's the area God wants you to change. 
Anytime something hits your heart, is the area God wants you to correct. And scriptures, they are for correction. They are not for collection. They are for what? All scriptures is given by the Spirit of God. For what? Profitable for doctrine. For what? Reproof. For instruction. For correction also. So if scripture is not for collection of notes, it's for correction. You've copied so many notes. Is it correcting you? If it's not correcting you, then what is the essence of copying 50 notes? Take note of what you have written down in your note for correction. Sir, here. Well, even if you're angry with me, you can't stone me. <laughs> you're not the one who gave me the microphone. God gave me. And God brought you here for me to talk to you. Okay. But I, God loves you, so take the truth. Take what? The truth. Proverbs 24. You will like it after we are done. You know, when we are small, if a principal said, don't go out! It's a wicked principal. Wicked. How can we not go out? But when you are mature, you say, that principal helped me. Out. True? Some things I'm telling you that you're angry, you will accept them tomorrow. When we are small, they say, don't go out. They say, oh, can this man say, we should not go and watch film. Me, I like to watch film. And he doesn't want me to go to, to plaza to watch film. What kind of principal is this? You not jump through the fence. <laughs> And then when you match it, but that man helped me. You know, I would have been useless if not for that man. So some of you would have been useless if not for the things I'm telling you. But you'll be useful. Proverbs 24. Three and four. This is the key scripture for today's teaching. Through wisdom is an house builded. And by understanding it is what? Established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Three things, striking words there. Wisdom. Understanding. Knowledge. We are going to dissect those three words. No family, no marriage, no home can be successful. Without these three things. In sequence is knowledge, understanding, wisdom. These three things lay the solid foundation for a progressive home and family. Through knowledge, through what? Knowledge is information. That's the meaning. He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Truth means original information. There's nobody that can be successful in any marriage or family without adequate information of the truth. Now hear this and hear me, we're people of God. Marriage was not instituted by government. Marriage was not instituted by any tradition. Marriage was instituted by God himself. It is God's idea. He said it is not good for men to be alone. So God himself instituted marriage. He's the originator of marriage. He is the one who made it. The first and oldest institution is marriage and the family. Now listen carefully, people of God. You don't ask question from somebody who is not the manufacturer of a product. This mic, I cannot go to Coca-Cola and say, Coca-Cola, what do you know about this mic? They may be richer, but only the manufacturers of this mic can give me the purpose of this mic. Is that true? Only God can tell you about marriage. No psychologist, nobody can tell you because the person who is the manufacturer is God. And when you buy a product, you see, they'll put a manual at the product bag as you open it. Say, read this manual before you operate this product. Is that true? Our manual for the family and marriage is the word of God. Is the Bible. Is what? That is the original manual. You must read it. You must have comprehensive knowledge of it if you must enjoy your marriage and family. Shout hallelujah. Now, refusing to release an instruction, for instance, I bought a camera or I bought any electronics, any kind, 
And I refused to read the manual and I began to operate and I, I'm frustrated. And I start blaming the letter. This useless thing. Am I not foolish? I'm foolish. Simple. I should read the what? The manual. Trying to blame your marriage for all the failures, you are foolish. You have not read the manual of marriage, which is the word of God. You must have a comprehensive knowledge. Age does not give knowledge. You can be married for 70 years and be very foolish. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Knowledge is not a gift. Knowledge is acquired. You will read books. You read what? You will study the word to know what God is saying about marriage. Don't go into marriage without knowledge. Without what? The reason for all the problems in the family is lack of knowledge. The devil is not the reason. It's lack of what? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Was that first? So it is not the devil causing the problem in the families. It's ignorance. It's what? Ignorance. Ignorance is simply what you have ignored to know. So here. If you want to be in command, then seek knowledge. Seek what? Knowledge. Get books by proven authors. Read them. Do what? Know on how to raise children. Know on how to live with your husband and wife. Know how to. So you, you can enjoy the best that God has for you. Shout hallelujah. No assumption. Know what? I said something. Anything outside the truth is an opinion. It's what? Whatever anybody says outside the word of God is an opinion. It's not the truth. Opinion does not set free. No psychologist can tell you about marriage. No philosopher can tell you about marriage. Only God and he left his word. Shout hallelujah. Today we depend on social media. So we get social media problems. Number two. Which is B. From that Proverbs 24 is understanding. Is what? It's under what? Paul speaking said in Ephesians 1.18. He said that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know. What is the hope of his what? Call you know. What is the riches of the glory? What is the riches of the glory of his saints? In the saints, understanding is simply comprehension. Are you able to comprehend what you have read? It's not enough to know something. You must understand what you know. Are you getting me, sir? Now, many times we stay in class, we copy notes with other people, but we do get the same result. No, the level of understanding differs. There are some who copy note and have thirty. Some even 20, some even 10 with plenty of caps. That you're in church does not mean you know about marriage. That you're in church does not mean you know about your family. You must have understanding of the word of God. So here. Are you getting me, sir? That you're a pastor does not make you to understand. Understanding is to see things the way God sees them. It's to hear the way God hears. Is to feel with his heart. Is to walk in his steps. Shout hallelujah. He said, the man that wandered out of the world of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Proverbs 21 verse 16. You know the meaning? He's saying, if you don't understand, you will get to the result like sinners. That means anything that happens to sinners will happen to you. That's the meaning of that scripture. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Now, one day a man was reading the open, you know, very educated man, but Philip asked him, understand that what thou readest. As 8 verse 30. He said, well, how, how can I? I said, someone help me verse 31. So most of us ask you, understand that what you are about to go into. You want to marry. Do you understand? You are married. Do you really know what marriage is? Marriage is not husband and wife sleeping. No. Where we read there? Do you see sex there? Sex is part of marriage, but do you see there? It's understanding. If what made you to marry is sex, you will divorce. God forbid. If what you made you to marry is because you're lonely, it will not last. What should make you to marry is because you have knowledge of marriage. Knowledge of what? People married today have no knowledge of marriage. He said, why you marry? Uh, I just want to marry now. He said, is that what you want to marry? Eh, I just feel like marrying. I'm too tired. I'm old. Is that the reason why you are getting married? He said, why do you want to marry? Eh, now, all my mates are married. What will I be waiting for? That's what you want to marry for? 
Kissing is not here. Did you see kiss here? So kissing. <laughs> Did you see kiss? Baby, I love you. It's not there. You must have knowledge. You must understand knowledge. And then number three is wisdom. Number three is what? Wisdom is the application of the truth. That you know something does not mean it will benefit you until you apply it. Until what? He that heareth these sins of mine and doeth them. Matthew 7 24. It's like an unto a wise man. And wisdom is the principal thing. If you are not doing what you know, it is not wisdom. It's not what? Proverbs 4 7 and Matthew 7 24. Wisdom is the principal, it controls all things. It controls what? You know. Fellowship is important, but you don't go to church. You are not wise, you are foolish. Shout hallelujah. Hmm? Wisdom is the correct application of what? Knowledge. Can I tell you a very practical thing now? Hmm? At the headquarters, the sound is making small hmm, disturbing. And I hear distorted sound. Somebody says, I know about sound. He said, what is it? He said, when the sound is making a humming noise, it means the speakers and the wire, you give me all the theory. Yet it's making noise. You are not wise. <laughs> you are not what? You have knowledge, but you don't have wisdom. Wisdom is go and stop the whoo. <laughs> as long as the whoo I mean, sound is there, you are not wise. You only have knowledge, but you don't know how to apply the knowledge. Speaking grammar about marriage. Marriage is two people together. Stay in one house. That is knowledge. You now, you stay with your wife in one house. <laughs> or two of you are living side by side. Wife is with parents. Your husband is with parents. That's not marriage. Two of them, they have knowledge. They don't have wisdom. Wisdom is the correct Wisdom is when you do what you know. Wisdom is what? Doing what you know. So here. He that heard the sins of man and what? Not and copied them or quoted them and preached them and recited them. All right. So we're looking at wisdom keys for family progress. Wisdom keys for family what? I was able to take, I think, six of them. So now tell them. I said number one, it is the first and oldest institution established by God. That's I've said it already. Number two, every family has an invisible enemy. I've said that. Number three, be selective in the books you read, the things you watch, including the church you attend. All these ones I've said. So I'm just number four, I said establish your family altar. Number five, be discreet about your family challenges. I said all that. And number six, I said invest time in training your children. Now number seven in this service. Number seven. Wisdom keys for family progress number seven. Are you there? Glory to God. Talk about family finance together. Talk about family what? Finance together. That is do money talk regularly. Do what? Do money talk regularly. One of the greatest sources of quarrel, stress, divorce, misunderstanding, hurts, and pressure in the house or in the family is the issue of money. Especially when it is inadequate to meet the needs of the family. For instance, if School fees have not been paid for children. You see, there's this agitation in the family. There's this stress in the family. Everybody will be frowning, entering the house and going out, banking dog, boah, boah, boah. Even some even use their legs on the ground like this to so make sure the attention is required all just to money. You see everybody sign. Money. So I'll give you some aspects. To consider in the wise handling of finance, in bracket, put money. 
some aspects to consider. Some what? In the wise handling of finance. In bracket, you put money. Under number seven. Roman figure one. Still under number seven. Are you with me? Some aspects of what? Some aspects to consider in the handling, in the, sorry, in the wise handling of what? I'm not just handling, the wise handling. In the wise what? Of finance, in bracket, money. Number one, that's Roman figure one, under seven. Every adult, that's every adult in the family, should work to earn money. Every adult should work to earn what? Money. Second Thessalonians three ten. For even when we are with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Do you hear what the Bible says? Until you learn how to earn money, you do not become wise spender. Until you learn how to earn money, you will never become a wise spender. You cannot maintain what you do not earn. Wealth gotten by vanishing shall diminish. He that gathered by labor shall greatly increase. Shout hallelujah. Two. Romans you go two. We are quoted is Proverbs 13 verse 11. Be disciplined in your spending. Be what? Please, this is major area of money. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Buy only the expedient. That is necessary vital things. Engage in priority spending. Engage in what? For instance, you have to buy a car and you have to pay rent and the money is not enough for the two. We should come first. Right. But a stupid person can buy a car. You can't live in a car, but you can get a transport to move about. But if you go buy a car and you've not paid rent, that's not priority spending. In priority, where should you come first? The house, because you can't live in your car. There's an alternative for car, but there's no alternative for the house. Is that clear, sir? That's what we mean. Be disciplined in your worth. Spend it. Three, invest money. When I mean three, I'm talking about I, I, I. Invest what? Money. Even Jesus had a treasurer who kept some money in case of need. Invest some money as not to beg tomorrow. Learn to budget. Learn to what? Planning is important. Learn to budget. Don't just spend money. Budget. This goes for this. This goes for this. This goes for this. Is that true? Glory to God. I will tell you the enemies of family finance. What are the enemies? Why am I talking money talk? It's a major problem. Check the problem in your family now. Somehow it falls around here. Don't push it on that carpet. Hmm? Are you hearing me? Check most crises in your marriage. It goes around this area. Enemies of family finance. A. Covetousness. What did I say? In First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. He said, godliness with contentment is great gain. The answer to covetousness is contentment. In Luke chapter 12 verse 15, a man's life is not considered. He said, and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life considered not in the abundance of the things which he what? Possesses. it. So I hear Try to leave. Don't try to see somebody and want to be like the person. There's a tribe in Nigeria, they call them the Igbos. They're the eastern part of Nigeria. Conventionally, they call it Anyuku. Big eye. Big what? You're trying to be like somebody else. B, another enemy of family planning, family finance, is impulse by spending. Impulse what? I-M-P-U. Just spell pause after you put the I-M. 
I M P U L S E. Impulse spending. Impulse what? That is, you buy something you didn't plan for just because you have money. Just because what? It is exceeding your budget. It's exceeding your what? Impulse spending. It brings problem. You, you say, what does it mean? Uh, I, I, I have to spend the money now. You are, you are going beyond your budget. Impulse buying. We do it. It's another simple, mild way. It's when you go for window shopping. You window shop to put yourself inside a problem. You, you just buy something, not because you need it, but because money is worth available. You just say, I need Hollandis. He said, What do you need? So, have you not bought this that you don't, you find out that you don't use them for anything? Okay. Then later you say, I regret it. Why did you buy them? C. C is lack of accountability. Lack of what? Lack of accountability. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, it said, He that is faithful in that which is least. Is faithful also in much. And it is not just in the least, it's not just what? If you cannot manage 10,000, you won't be able to manage 100,000. You must be accountable. Must be what? Your husband gave you a particular amount based on his salary. Don't say no. Your mates are doing like this. The mates and him are they earning the same salary? It's an enemy. Make sure you spend within that income. And tell him, this is what I use the money to do. Be accountable. Be what? Accountable. Families, many people are not accountable. The money I gave, what did you do? Then you start frowning. Is it because of this moment you gave me, you are not harassing me like that? No. Accountability is part of development in any family. You must be accountable. You must be what? Accountable. D. Non-payment of tight. Non-payment of what? Every member of the family, whether you like it or not, must be a tight. Otherwise, the family will be tough. Men pay tight. Wife pay tight. Children pay what? Tight. In my short term, I've noticed anybody going through financial stress in the family is not a giver. Did you hear me at all? Yesterday, something happened around me. A young man came to do work. I told one of my domestic staff, the young man who started working with me of recent, and I said, This young man, something's wrong with me. I don't believe that this young man is, is paying tight. I said, this is abnormal. It's an abnormality. It has never happened in my life. As small as 5,000 to give him was not available. I said, it's not normal. I said, no, this boy, there's something wrong. It's not, he it doesn't pay tight. 5,000. I don't give somebody 5,000 in my life. I said, okay, just get him 5,000 let him go. The 5,000 was not there. I said, something's wrong. This guy, something is wrong. I don't think he pays that. Is he in church? He's in church. I said, something's wrong. 5,000 at my level? was not available. I said, this guy does not pay tight. The reason your family is under so much pressure, you're not a tighter. You think, you think, oh, we have demand. We have problems. No, that's not it. The demands cannot take the place of the truth. No, we have to pay bills. We have to do that. We have to do this. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Do not rob God in your attempt to save money or make up for some of our sin expenses. Oh, God sees what we are going through. It's irrelevant. The scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be what? He said, bring your tithe into my store. Let me meet my hand. Put me here with an open the windows of heaven. Malachi 3, 10 to 12. Brother, sister, your family must pay tithe. Abraham paid tight. The family was blessed. My friend, a non-tight paying family, things will be tight. 
I don't care the midnight deliverance. You think no demon is running your family financially. You are not a faithful tighter. Every broke man is a turn faithful tighter. I know you will not like it. But I'll tell you the truth. If you're in this kingdom, things are tough. Check your faithfulness and your financial dealings with God. I don't care who may say anything he likes on social media. I will keep preaching the truth. If you like twist what I preach, I will say... I read something that made me not to bother. He said, don't waste your time with critics. Jesus never wasted time with Pharisees. If you like talking to us, I mean, I won't answer you. I won't even have your time. I won't even see it. I don't see the things you see. If you say they pretty tight, I don't see them. And I'll still preach it. Tomorrow I'll still preach it. Hmm? I don't live by your tight. Someone say, when they say, you can give one million, waiting, waiting, nobody, the money will give back. Who told you that you're stupid where you are? You will wait to talk. Give your own now. My friend, pay tight. If you don't pay tight as a family, things will be tight. Hello? All this, I'm broke every day. You are really broke. You are tightening. Husband, you don't pay tight. Things will be tight. If your wife is a tighter, you're not a tighter, she'll be richer than you. And you know when a woman is richer, men get very angry. Why are you angry with your wife who is more well, well blessed than you? What she do, you're not doing. And if your husband is one giving, you are not giving. You will be broke. Every time you will be fighting your husband, you will be holy his ties. You know, give me money. Is he your, is he your source? He said, God, Almighty God is your source. Your husband is your source. You to give. When women don't give, they hold their husband's neck. You know, come up for house. You know, come up for house. Did God say, the husband, the husband is to give you feeding money. You must supply your needs. My friend, give your money. When you give, God knows how to bless you. Shout Hallelujah. All this tension and tension and tension and tension give you hypertension. Please remove the hyper and uh, remove the tension and have peace. Hypertension is simply hyper plus tension. So disorganize the two. You won't pay. Even as I'm talking now, those who don't pay tight are the ones who are frowning. <laughs> and they really want to beg members in the church. They worry people in the church. They write notes. They get angry with everybody in the church. So as I'm talking now, they're very angry. Now only morning when they talk, before we now go talk. <laughs> I go talk poverty. If I talk poverty, won't you run here? Yeah? If I say, come now, I say, everybody here go poor, everybody here go poor, everybody go poor. No, say, he say, come, David, are you okay? <laughs> now I say, everybody go rich. He say, no one here. Pay your tight. I have been this gospel for some short time. Everybody going through stress is not faithful in covenant work with God. Don't put your family under pressure. Mm. Let me tell you something. Do you know when you give to a giver, money comes? Like this. When you give to a person who is not giving, your money starts going down. Check every time you give. Why do you give to me? You get blessed. I'm a giver. If you give to a giver, you get blessed. If you give to somebody who is not a giver, your money will go down. God will not allow your money to go down. There are many concrete, concrete, concrete Christians. They got their family, my family, no school fees. The man did not pay, he has been money again for 10 years. 5,000. I was shocked yesterday. I said, I said 5,000. Okay, look at my level, 5,000. Something was wrong. True? That is, I gave money, oh, listen, two of them. One, I said they should go and give him 50,000 because he was sick in the house. I said, go and give the boy 50,000. Then I said, this one who is around, give him 5,000. They said, sir, the 50,000 is what they carry. I had to put my hand into a money reserve. I said, I'm going to go to that reserve one, collect five. But I folded my hand. I said, this guy. Not a more, more coins, it's not his problem. <laughs> he has a problem. He's hearing me. Two of us are seeing each other. <laughs> Only two of us know. I said, something is wrong. This guy is not faithful in his covenant dealings with God. God can't lie. You know, it's under hard times you know whether you're faithful. When you need so many things and then you want to remove 10%, I will tell you no, but you have not done this. You not think that you are smarter than God. Number eight. Some have been praying, make you leave this topic. Some say, oh God of heaven, Papa, jump eight, leave, leave this, this one. Go to, okay, I've gone to number eight now. So if you are binding even your heart, I bind you, Papa. Papa, leave this topic, I bind you. And I refuse to be bound, Judge. 
He said, I bind you. If I talk anything, you are happy. But when you talk money, say, Child, in Jesus' name, Papa, leave now. Go forward. Go forward. And then me too. I'm not going to leave. I see they talk. <laughs> I've left now, so you are rest. But go and pay. You know why? When you don't pay, you stress people in church. You can't be writing notes, writing notes to everybody. I need transport. I need uh, this. You don't need all that. Your, your name is not Mr. Needy. Number eight. Number eight, are you there? Something like that is number eight, oh. Communication. Number eight is what? The eight key, wisdom key is communication. For family progress. Good communication is an enhancer for a great family. Communication is an act of using words Sounds, signs, or behaviors to express information, ideas, thoughts, and feelings. I say communication is an act of using words, sounds, signs, or what? Behaviors to express information, ideas, thoughts, and feelings. You know, you can do like this. Your wife will know what you're talking you can even stamp your foot like this. A woman who is used to you, 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 you are telling her, say, check, you are not sitting well. You know, some women sit like this. <laughs> so if the husband wants her to sit well, he will just do like this. And the wife will know the child should just do like this. So you can use sound. You can look at your children. Somebody wants to give them something, you do like this. They know that they are saying, don't take don't take. Tell say thank you and get out of this place. But if they don't know communication, they will even stand there. They say, my begin come out nice. <laughs> the, this food will come out for me. <laughs> Poor communication is the reason behind brutality in many Christian marriages. Poor what? Communication is not a gift. Is something you have to learn and improve on. There's no gift of communication. Effective communication is a participative conversation that involves talking, listening, understanding, and giving feedback. Communication helps to strengthen intimacy. Understanding and trust. Here are these families. To communicate effectively, you have to be approachable to your spouse and children. Are the men hearing me? Are the men hearing me? Do not present yourself as someone who cannot be reached. Don't become the lion of your house. Be free in such a way that your spouse and children will not be afraid to discuss with you. If your children are afraid to discuss with you, you're in trouble. Make sure you create time to allow that communication to take place. Let your wife be able to approach you. Not that she wants to approach you, she's afraid. So there are men who are afraid to approach their wives. They don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There's no better way to know your spouse than to discuss freely about a variety of issues that affect your home or family. I'll give you a typical example in the Bible is the woman Esther. If you read Esther chapter 4, when Esther was to pray the king, she prayed, she planned, she chose her words. She chose her what? And placed before talking with the king on behalf of the Jews. Communication, you must pick your words. You must pick what? You must pick your words in communication. You don't just talk to somebody. Somebody, Your husband is not your own child. Listen. Women, hear me. And your wife is not your slave. Don't talk to your husband the language of a mother. I've said it before. No woman has a right to tell her husband, sit down here. I want to talk to you. That's a mother who can talk to him, not you. Can I share something with you? 
God says, sit down. Since you don't want to hear, I want to talk to you. That is not the language of a wife. That's the language of his mother. Because she gave back to him no matter his age. My husband, I want to share something with you. Communication. Every time somebody reacts, you didn't communicate well. You didn't what? A woman of God said, a man of God was just coming from work tired. Exhausted. She told him something. And he said, don't tell me that. What is it? He shouted at her. He was exhausted. He's just coming back from work. But the same thing she told him the following day when he was relaxed. He said, oh, the approach was wrong. You can't talk to a man after a day's job. He's already worn out. What you're saying is important, but the timing is wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It has caused friction in homes. That caused what? I like to air my mind. You are stupid. Everybody has a mind. You are not the only one. Esther knew the timing. She knew what? Words are powerful. They have the ability to create peace and they have the ability to destroy the system. There's a time under the heavens, Ecclesiastes 31. In communication, learn to respect each other's views. Don't think that your own view alone will stand. Learn to respect the other person's views. In communication, please, husbands, respect your wife's views. Wife, respect your husband's views. Don't say, my own, you are, you are not the tyrant of your house. The man should wait. Should not wait to be respected by the woman. Respect should be mutual. Respect should be what? Men to respect your wife. She's not your beast and she's not your pig. Women to respect the men. So here. Are you getting me? When communicating, be truthful and sincere. Be what? Because half truth is a whole lie. Truthfulness builds trust. In Matthew 5, 37, but let your communication be yea, yea, and what? Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Be truthful in your communication. So here. It's the major part many miss it. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to what? What you're saying is right, but your presentation is wrong. So the person shouts and says, what is it? You are mad. You are stupid. He says, look at how you abuse me because you don't know how to communicate. The same word, somebody else will pass it with that. John the Baptist says something, they cut off his head. Jesus said, you know what cut off his head. You knew how to communicate. You knew how to what? Communicate. Never tell somebody something when he's tired. And what I may love me, the person will react. You have seen a man come back from work. That's not the time to tell him. To correct him. He's tired. I like him when he's calm. But I like to air my views. I like to, I'm, me, I like to air my views. Your views have not brought peace. You'll be viewing from window. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> because your views can throw you out of the house. God forbid. <laughs> Uh, here. Number nine. Are you blessed today? We're in complete counseling section. Deliverance is not somebody pushing it down. It's the word of God. He sent his word. If you have knowledge of this, would you have, pro- would you have had a problem? No. Number nine, romance. Number nine is what? <laughs> see the way, see the way. When I say communication, you do not shout. I said finance is not short. Now I said romance. That means see, you see where your heart is. I said money. You wanted me to finish. And now I said romance. <laughs> okay, if you have romance without finance, it will be <clears throat> without finance with <clears throat> romance won't work. Oh. What makes romance to work is what? Finance. Without finance, romance will not work. There will be no love without finance. No poor man can enjoy romance. <laughs> Have you seen any woman who says, I love my husband when he's poor? 
In fact, they will tell you, don't mind that. Yeah, 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 yeah man. That, who cannot pay school fees? Look at him. He says, a man. He's not a man. Yeah, 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 man. He's broke. But when a man has something, he's a very good man, though. No? It's a lie. All the qualities of the poor man, the man has the one. But one is good, one is bad because hmm, law of fame when there's no money. Find out what fame means in English. All right, first Corinthians 7, 1 to 5. Let me do and close. So you can see romance, everybody's happy. It's a now concerning things whereof I wrote unto you. It is good for a man not to be touch a woman, but uh, so that's not. Nevertheless, I avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own worth, husband. Let the wife render unto the so let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had no power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband had no power of his own body, but what the wife. Verse five. Finally, defraud not. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with what? Consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to what? Fasting and prayer, and come again, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinences. Shout hallelujah. Marriage is designed for enjoyment. It is impossible to have a successful home without a sound romantic relationship. So I hear. Romance is to keep the marriage running. Sex and romance are expressions of the love shared between husband and his wife. When romance is tampered with in marriage, disaster is created. That will not be our portion. Husband and wives are not only supposed to be united mentally and spiritually, they should also be united bodily. So here, the more romantic your marriage, the more established your home will be. Mm? Take quality time to play with your spouse as hard as you work. Don't allow work to the place of romance. Don't pretend to be praying when your spouse wants your body. You heard what I said? A sexually deprived marriage is heading for destruction. That will not be a portion. Be emotionally committed to each other and enjoy a sweet and strong family. Are you getting me? It's very important. One man of God said it's very important. Mm. Finally, number 10, and we close. Make the word of God your standard for living as a family. Make the word of God your standard for living as a family. God's word tests the husband, the wife, and their children, their responsibilities. God's word tests the husband, the wife, and the children, their what? Responsibilities. As a family, it tells each one responsibility. For the man, it gives us a responsibility. Look at, I'll just narrow it. I've taught already, so I won't take too much on it. Ephesians 5.25, for the man, for the husband. Shall we read, uh, men want to go? Ephesians 5.25. Ephesians 5.25. Ephesians 5.25. Men read together. Want to go. Women to read so you can know the responsibility of a man. Want to go. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. I've never understood it until. I was studying for this service. I got deep revelation. Do you know even as a pastor. Between the church and my family. Which, I know it before but I got deep. Which one comes first? Between the church and the family, which one comes first? So when, when I travel, why do you grumble? When I go out with my family, it's in everything they travel. You want me to be following you, to be preaching for you, I don't want to travel. Thank you. My friend, who is to love you is Christ. Me, I'm to love my family. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at the Bible. Husband, love what? Even as... So the real love for you is not me, it's Christ. If I love you, I'm loving this church. So me, I'm to care for you, is to love you. My own love should go to my family first. You, number two. 
Who should love you? Uh, not, if I go to over love you, he will be jealous. So he said, don't love my church. You are prostituting loving my church. It's me to love them. You love your family. As Christ loved his church. So a pastor who leaves his family to say, a church, I carry it from my head. You make Christ angry. Christ said, look, your own. Face your own. My own. Face them. That does not mean we will not love you, but we will not take his place. Most times, pastors say, how can you cancel from morning to night? Your wife, you, know, you never go to see her. Let me broke it. Go and see your wife. Don't cancel from morning to night in the name of I'm doing God's work. And I, I, I don't say, don't, don't play to me so that because I pull up, when I say that, God does not say she sleep with your wife morning to night. <laughs> because you have to balance it. So people are very funny. They say, don't you say so? He will not leave his work. I'll be talking to his wife. No, you must walk, away, otherwise, there'll be no food on your table. <laughs> no, some very funny. They say, Did you hear what Papa say? So we're going to get there for our wife. If you leave your work, you go hungry. <laughs> Bless it. But Christ is the one to love his church. We are to love our wives. So I hear. Hmm? So the first love should be to all. So man, love your wife. But I got something deeper. Very deep. Verse 26, look at it. That he might certify and cleanse it with the washing of water. Now, this is what it says. When a man is born again, his duty is to feed his wife with the word. That's why the man must be more knowledgeable than his wife. Bring her to the point where he wants her to be. Is to nurture her. If my wife knows more than me, it's an anathema. The duty of a man is to nurture his wife to the point he wants her to be in Christianity. Is the role of a man. Man, it's not, don't you have any man? No, you have a work to do. That's why a man must be knowledgeable enough to tell the wife, this is what you should do. This is what God's word says. Your wife pray one hour, you should pray two hours. If your wife reads one chapter, you should read five chapters. Your wife should not be spiritually sound more than you. It's not unscriptural. Your duty is to nurture her to the point where you want her to be. So women are not supposed to be sound more than the men. Knowledgeable. The woman should be far knowledgeable. I don't mean school. I'm talking about, about the things of God. So I hear. Your wife can have a PhD, but things of God you should know more than your wife. Any man the woman knows more than him in Christ is an abnormality. Mm. Men, are you hearing what I'm talking about? Just imagine my wife knows more than me. Won't you run? She was born again years before me. Oh, long, 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 long. When my wife became born again from SU. My wife has been in SU. She has gone to church where they don't wear earring. Long scarf, trousers, cloth here. Wear all those cloths that are here. You won't see anything here. They cover the ear, everything. She has gone to those kind of churches. I was not born again. But I became born again. I just give her like this. If your wife quote the Bible, one chapter, you should quote 10. Men, are you hearing me? Yes. Your wife will be not be telling you scriptures. He said, my wife likes to go to church. You're a useless man. <laughs> you should be more knowledgeable than your wife. According to the Bible, you are the head of the house. Headship is responsibility. True test of leadership is to know more than others. You are not a leader if not it's in your head. To be the head, to be ahead of others, there must be something in your head. Are you getting me? Hmm? Are the men hearing me? You must also provide for your house. It's your duty. You must provide for what? That's your responsibility. First Timothy 5.8. You are the one. You say you are the father of the house. Father means Abba. And Abba means provider. So provide. Provide Jerry. You provide for your house. Sir here. And you know, I said something in the second service did about when a woman gives birth to a baby, they said you will not show her up. Is that true? Mothers take care of what? Babies. Is that true? Do you know that the woman is your baby? 
How do I know? In Genesis 3.20, when God created Eve, it was not God that called her Eve. It was Adam that called her Eve. He said, this is my baby. The bone of my bones. It was not God who said, so it was Adam who looked at her and said, wow, this is my baby. So to say my baby, you are not wrong. That means if it's your baby, you are to nurture her with the word of God to the point you want her to be. If your wife does not know how to dress, show her how to dress. If you don't like the way your wife looks, bring her to the point you want her to look. That's the work of your husband. No, you don't have your husband. No, you have a work to do. You have a response to train your children. You are the major figure to tell them, let's go to church. Don't say, let's go to church and you're staying at home. No, take them to church. Then for the wife. Ephesians 5, 22, 24. If you see from 22 down to 25, if you have those chapters, it's a summary of marriage. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the what? Me, not let God I go listen. It's not it's a lie. The Bible said, submit to your husband. Submission is not slavery. Mystic sub- submission is not what? Submission means bring yourself under a law in line with the word of God. That's what it says. Verse 24. Verse 24 for them. Therefore, as the church is subject to unto Christ, so let the wife be subject to their own husbands in some things. Stop hiding your checkbook. Can I say something that will touch you? My husband is a very useless man, so I don't show him my money. I hide it. True? But you give him your body. The to the useless man. You yeah, glorify prostitute then. If you can give your body, it's your money you're hiding. Which means you love money more than your body. A man you can give your body, show him your money. And a responsible man will never take a woman's money. Any man who takes a woman's money is the highest level of irresponsibility. You don't take women's money. They show you, you say, God bless you, have it. That does not mean the woman cannot support the home, but you don't take a woman's money. No, no. Men, all of you young boys who are not dependent on managing bank managers and uh, women working in good places, you are a very useless young man. Useless. <laughs> you want to marry, it's the office is working, you are thinking of. You are not thinking of how you work hard. He said, that babe is working in the bank. If I marry her, she's earning so, so, woman money. Then they chop her more. Let me broke it. Let me broke it. For, they don't eat woman's money. They don't eat what? Some of you that are young, young, all these young jingolos. That's how you're behaving now. You, you say, she's working in a good place. Are you want to marry a business partner? How can you not work hard? Young men work now. You are going to marry a woman for, because she's working somewhere. A man. You want to depend on the woman's money. Woman money. <sighs> Woman money is her money. The man's money he is our money. <laughs> Don't depend on your wife's money. Mm? You make yourself a slave. Make her say what? Don't depend on someone. If she brings it, no problem. But don't depend on it. Your duty is to provide. She may have plenty money more than you, but give her the feeding money. In fact, all the men of God who don't give their wives feeding money, they are all broke. I notice that any man of God that does not give his wife feeding money will be a poor, poor preacher. To every man, too, if you don't give your wife feeding money, you'll be very broke. She may have all the money, but at your level, give her feeding money. So God can keep blessing you. It's scriptural. You see, you are worse than an infidel. You're an unbeliever. How can you not give your wife feeding money? And then she gives you food. You are, you are comfortable to eat it? Some of you will tell her, is it this meat inside you are giving me? <laughs> if your wife should feed you, you know, women greet like this. And men greet like this. If your wife is one feeding you after eating, you are not the woman. Greet her like this. <laughs> Every time you finish eating, since it won't feed you, you know, men greet like this, women greet like this. So now that you have become the woman, since she's feeding you, after eating, they say, 
my wife, Mr. Victoria. <laughs> you are a disappointment to manhood. You are a disappointment to manhood. Your wife feed you and food and pass your throat. All the young men, go and walk. Go and walk. Go and walk. In fact, this church counseling has changed. I've told them, you, before you marry, you must stay. We have, in fact, I've told them, six months, we may push you to nine months. You will know about, you must know everything about marriage before you say, yes, I do. And you must, all of a sudden you say, I'm a businessman. We will know the business you do. <laughs> I'm a, a, a civil contractor. Which civil? <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see the contract you're doing. We'll see the company. We'll see the office. Not I'm a civil General contractor, general, general contractor, you're a dangerous man. General contractor. <laughs> general contractor. I go. And for you, children, hear this. Ephesians 6, let me read 1 to 4, and then we close, and we're done. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father. And thy mother, which is the first commandment with what? Listen, we live in a society where children don't honor parents. I said it. You hear somebody call his father by name, it's unscriptural. Never you call your parents by their names. Just as a Western culture, it's a satanic, worldly culture, it's not scriptural. Never call your parents by name. The daddy and mommy is enough. Don't say, Hi, do Mike. Your father is not your mate. That's why you see them, they die anyhow. He said, that it may be. Don't point your finger at your father. No matter how your father has made a mistake, it's your father. Don't say, no sense. You born me what? No, you will die quick. Listen. He said, that it may be well with you. That you may live long on the earth. You can't insult your parents. You can only advise your parents. Spiritual or physical. Today we live in a world where people have become so arrogant. They talk to parents and think the parents are their mates. No, that is not the kingdom lifestyle. They are your parents. You cannot say, sit down! Sit down. Let me show you from the Bible. If your father calls you, it's irrevocable. Read your Bible. People don't read the Bible so they think that your father is your man. If your father should cause you be the most anointed person, it will work. Noah caused his son until today the son became useless. If a father cause you with anger, do anything, it will work. Don't say, is he born again? Honor their father and their mother. He didn't say honor them before they are born again. Honor them. Some don't honor people. The, you know, the Western world have traveled. If you see how they suffer, they suffer. Well, they don't honor parents. They said, the that guy, I got take him brown to old people's home. He can't be there. Old people's home for your father. You carry your father, go to old people's home. You too, they will carry you to old people's home. They will carry you from 40. They will carry you to old people's home. <laughs> Those things are not things you learn. In the first chapter, I said, we must not take the culture of the world we must influence the world with our own culture. Today now we're importing the social media culture. You are taking marriage counseling from somebody on social media who has married five times. It's who you are taking counsel from. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh. That it may be worth. On the earth, fast forward. You pay them to listen to what parents said. So it's both sides. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Don't say because they're a father, you just do anything you like. Bring them up in the not and mention of the Lord. Raise them up. It's your duty. Are you getting me? Whatever you want your children to be, you be it. Hello? You have had enough. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. I said something in other services. I don't know whether it's necessary here. Please, brothers and sisters, there's a trend in the society where men are marrying men, women are marrying women. It's not scriptural. It's not what? 
It's against the Bible. In the kingdom of God, men don't marry men, women don't marry women. In our kingdom, it is forbidden. It is what? It is forbidden for men to marry men. Please. It's not scriptural. Don't deport it into the house of God. Do you know homosexuality is against scriptures? The Bible says so. Do you know even as simple as tattoo is not good for a believer? Leviticus 18 verse 22, the New Living Translation. Let's read together so that it will not be David Biome who wrote it. Want to go? So you should know that it's opposite to oh, having woman to woman to is the same thing. So the Bible does not say woman, it's always say man, man. So don't say now nah, man, then talk there. Because people want to know Bible more than God. You say now, nah, did they say woman there? Please, the same thing. When you say man, he's talking about man and man. Please, even in church, in case a woman do like this to you, a fellow woman say, Are you okay, your head? <laughs> Leviticus 18:22. Shall we read together? Want to go? Is it what I quoted before? Yeah. Leviticus 20.13. 20, Read the A part. Both have committed what? Stop there. Now, you say, what's wrong with me? I haven't tattooed my body. I got more than I do on my body. Turn with me to Leviticus 19, verse 28. Leviticus 19, verse 28, the same translation, right together? That's not the part. With what? With what? With what? I am the Lord. If you did it before you were born again, well, God knows it is. But now you are born again, to now be born again and now carry your. If you did it before you were born again, well, there's nothing you can do. It's past. But to not be born again and carry your body to go under there's a put tattoo here. You know what I'm saying? To put tattoo here. Don't do it too. Because the one you did before born again is gone. There's nothing you can do. God knows that you did it in ignorance. But now you can't you have no excuse. All of you who are looking but on a serious note, you are talking to your fellow man. Are you no man? Man. You see man like this, got you like this. Your fellow man. Yeah. If a fellow man touches you, it's like some people touching somebody. It's true? There'll be no feelings. Will there be any feelings? Fellow man touch you. Woman hand and man hand, are they the same? That's what they call it feminine touch and muscular touch. A fellow man. So I don't know how. Look, you think madness is only just somebody in psychiatric hospital? People are mad. That's what is saw Sodom and Gomorrah. Even in church, some women follow their fellow women. This is basic. It's, it's unheard of. How can the woman follow a fellow woman? You, 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 okay? woman, you are talking to a woman? Some even go for men and women at the same time. Something. Something is wrong. Please, I beg you. Eh? In case the demon is following you like that. Just after this service, he said, Demon, you must leave me. Demon, you must leave me. Demon, you must go. You must go. I cast you out. How can you see your fellow woman and be attracted to a woman? So we will look at the fellow woman and get lost. <sighs> it's satanic. In case they are doing it in any service group, call the person. When you see the next person, come home. I guess the fellow woman come. <laughs> Stop today. Don't pretend. Don't, don't. In case a young man is doing that, call him to order. Say, come. You stop this thing you're doing. When my grandmother was alive, and a particular military man used to come to the house late in the night during the Civil War. So, in case you don't understand English, just hear what I say. If you understand the language. So, she didn't know how to speak English well. She looked at, she took the lantern, we are small. He said, you night like, like you come. That's every night you come. Every night you come. He said, you stupid, you football, you... The... She took... <laughs> <laughs> so, she says to... So, you... Every day you come, look for me, woman. Every day you come, look for me, woman. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? How can a woman be attracted to another woman? It's madness. A man attracted to a man? There's some, this is not, it's beyond psychiatric. 
It's, there's, there's another name they give to something beyond psychiatric. They should give it. All the men you see money like that don't think they are normal. That somebody's wearing suit does not make him a good person. It's off. How can a normal person marry a fellow man and then be putting out on television? And you say, that's what is raining now. Boy, they should put you with animals in the zoo. Don't learn such things, they're ungodly. Don't bring that to the church. Are you hearing me now? And don't be the church and practice such. Get out of the church. Don't do it. It's ungodly. It's what? It's ungodly. Don't do it. It's not, it's not scripture. It's not accepted in the kingdom of God. Say here. If you like, get angry, it's your business. Will you flog me? My friend, I don't tell you if you like vex. Okay, let's pray. Some of you, if you have a way, not you, because you can't be doing it. Even if you are doing it, you will stop now. With the things I've told you, you will stop. Won't you stop? You will stop. I will stop it. Next time, your fellow woman won't touch you. Stop! In the place. So the madness in the person will leave. <laughs> they even have club. They have club. The money club. I curse those associations. How can a man not say a woman? Man, woman. Okay, you're a woman. Do you have womb? No man, if you like, bring your breast with hormonal drugs, do everything. You don't have a womb. You don't. Woman means the man with the womb. So all those hormonal drugs, to tell her science has a limit. No woman they change. If they lie, they, no, they have breasts. Breast comes out. Waist can come out. But womb, you will never come out. So you can't have a womb. Because that one, God makes sure that science does not get to that level. That's why you see that no matter how they change, they say they cannot have children. Okay, the women were changing to men. Do they have it? Okay. Science has taken some men on and put there. Thank you. It does, they don't have it. The women, anyhow you do, you don't have the men. Do you have womb? Okay. So that means the woman, even if she like, the man who changes to be a woman is still a man. He's still a man. with all his breasts, he's a man. It's madness. And so we do like this. I saw one day jailed. He was doing like this. I said they were sentenced after six years. With long, long fingers. I said, oh, this is madness. The finger was like, like uh, the eagle finger. It was up to this one. I, said, I don't know why the judge not sentenced and plenty. <laughs> Such people are spoiling the society with nonsense. Affecting youth's mind. So you think that is the best way to go. Please don't follow that way. It's the demonic way to go. Oh yeah, fourth service. Let's pray. You pray. <laughs> You pray from Ephesians 5, 25 to 6. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by what? The word. Verse, Proverbs 22, verse 6 is on the screen. Train up your child the way she go when it's always you want to depart from it. Do you see it? Pray that every husband will replicate godly leadership. Godly what? Role in their home to sacrificially love and cherish their wives and train their children in the fear of God. Look at the screen. You've seen it. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray for the husbands. Is that how you pray? Because I don't say you should pray for money. Pray, my friend, in the name of Jesus. Pray for the men. Lord, pray for the husband to replicate godly leadership role in their family. In sacrificial love style for their wives and train up their train in the fear of the Lord. Open your mind and pray to pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Second prayer point, you pray for God's grace upon every wife to remain humble, submissive, and supportive to their husbands, be a good keeper of the home, and to build godly character in their children. Ephesians 5, 22, 24, we quoted it already. Titus 2, 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober and love their husbands and love their children. Look at the prayer point. Go ahead in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus' mighty name. Now, you are going to pray the final prayer point. In Genesis 12, 2 to 3, it's I will bless thee and make thy name, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. And I will bless thee, and, ble- and I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that cause thee, and in thee shall all the farms of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. Pray to destroy every struggle, stagnation, frustration, and setback in your family. Ask God to bless you and your family. Make your name great and a blessing to humanity. Open your mouth, look at the screen, and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Pray that every struggle, stagnation, frustration, and setback in your family should come to an end. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, no prayers. I will prophesy in Psalm 68, verse 6. I've used this so today you should know. Today you should know by now. NIV. Jesus is Lord. Not look at it. It said, God says the lowly in what? Family. Now, that lowly is for the women and men. It's not good for a man to be alone. So Every single is supposed to be in a family. That's the meaning of that scripture. That means God would desire that the people who are not married, that desire to marry, should have husband and wife. Everybody wants to marry, set your heart, lift your hands to heaven. Now, to, in case you want to stand for somebody, too, I can pray for the person, maybe your sister, your brother, your children, your relations. In your, in not, every, not everybody, some are married, but you want somebody to marry. Use yourself as a point of contact. Everyone that say I want someone to marry, or you want to marry, I decree right now, be released into your marriages. Into your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every single person I declare before this is over, you will run into your own family will be established. Amen. You will have your own family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever that man, that woman is, I call them forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be found miraculously in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even this month before it is over, somebody will see you. Amen. The right person to marry you will see you. Amen. The right person you will marry, you will see them. In the name of Jesus. Every delay is broken. I declare supernatural speedy recovery of your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Your children, grandchildren, they will never be delayed in marriage. Everyone who is alone that desires to marry, this is your miracle time. In the precious name of Jesus. Let's give him thanks and praise. Let's give him thanks and praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. If you are not born again, you must belong to the family of Jesus. That's the first family that is more important for you to belong to. Wherever you are in any part of the world, you've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want you to offer these prayers after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart. That you died and rose from there to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If offered our prayers, don't just sit, stand when others take their seats. If today is your very first Sunday to worship with us in any of our churches, kindly stand, we want to welcome you. Kindly stand, we want to welcome you. You're welcome to Salvation Miss, the home of success. Everyone standing want to say that we love you, we celebrate you. Keep coming and your life will never remain the same. God bless you. They will give you a piece of paper, fill it and give it back to the officers that give it to you. And also keep coming for God to change your story. While I was just saying, say, anything you don't thank me for will not multiply. When God does anything surprising, give him the glory. We are surprised we can't believe that salvation ministries without we announce it, without we do something. God has the way he does things through one of the young men that's a part of this commission now. 
some young people gathered in the faraway Pakistan and then they already have salvation races as a fellowship. <laughs> young men revived, charged, gathered people and they snapped with salvation races banner in an Islamic nation of Pakistan. Amen. To God we give all the glory. We didn't do anything there. We didn't win souls, but God damn Pakistanis, plenty of them, already worshiping there already. Amen. That's why when you pray, leave it to God. How God will do it is not your business. There's no way any missionary from here would have gone to Pakistan, but he raised somebody from there. And not that they want to, they already, as we are doing service now, people are already in service. Amen. Translating. God is a faithful God. To him, we, why I shared it, he just reminded me, he said, thank me. Shall we all rise? I said to God, thank you. Thank you, mighty God. We give you the glory and praise. Thank you, Father, for making it happen. Take all the glory, take all the praise. You are the doer of it. In the precious name of Jesus. Take this close information before they come to do one or two things for us to close. Tuesdays, Home Fellowship. Today's Home Fellowship at 6 p.m. Join the Home Fellowship at 6 p.m. at the end. Thursday is the last midweek service for the month. It's Living Error Free. Living what? On the 25th. And then the last Sunday of the month, April 28th, is Special Anointing Service. <laughs> Operation One Week, One Soul. Bring them to church. Continuous. Come with your oil next Sunday. Invite all your members of your family. It's going to be an explosive service. Please, remember what I've taught, you get these materials. Nobody can have a progressive family without knowledge. Without what? So get these materials. I gave these materials to a pastor, not a pastor of this commission, a pastor that has his own ministry in Kaduna. He came and said he has divorced already. I just said, pastor, this is the only thing I can do for you. I gave him the materials. He took the materials, settled with his wife. They ate them. He testified you on Sunday. Without one single prayer, without one single he said the knowledge opened his eyes and he reconciled with his wife. Don't all the prayer you're offering cannot amount to more knowledge. Knowledge is more important than 40 days fasting. Get these materials. Don't say it's expensive. Nobody, all of you who are getting married, make sure you eat them. Eat them. Don't go into a marriage when you have not had what? Knowledge. Knowledge is not assumed. And then you can also have them on this flash drive. Shout hallelujah. Give thanks to God for his word. Oh, Bible school, lift your hands. Stretch your hands towards the Bible school students who are graduating today in all centers. Pray for them in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Bible school students who are graduating today in all centers. We ask that the oil upon them never run dry, but refreshed in the name of Jesus. Fresh oil upon all of you. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened to know the hope of his calling in Christ Jesus. No one amongst you will fall by the wayside. You shall all, the time of earth is over you will make heaven at the end. Thank you, Father. Father, let your hand of grace be upon every Bible student graduate in all centers, all states, all over the world in the name of Jesus. Fresh oil upon you, fresh grace upon you. Whatever this commission carries, I carry rest upon all of you in the name of Jesus. As hands are laid on you, the eyes of understanding be opened in Jesus' mighty name. Give God thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Blessed be the holy name, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. You may please be seated. In the book of Psalm 92, verse 1, it said, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Yesterday, some people wedded in our global headquarters, Abia State, Enugu, Enugu State, Uyo Akwaibom State, Akure Ondo State, Makodi, Benue State. Please, those that were there yesterday, kindly come to the front of the altar with their family members, friends, and well wishers for your thanksgiving. Lord, you are good. You are glorious. You are excellent in all your ways. Say you are good. Lord, you are good. Yes, you are excellent in all your ways. You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good. You are glorious.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm 118, verse 1, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. These people that waited on Saturday are here to thank God for all that God did in all the centers. I stand under the grace backing my master and our father in the Lord, Pastor David Ibiomia, to decree and declare that this marriage will not crash. In the name of Jesus, your marriage will go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. The grace that answered to this commission will answer to you. In the name of Jesus, you shall be fruitful, you will multiply. In the name of Jesus, grace will answer to you in everything. You will not lack any good thing. In the name of Jesus, as Jesus tarry, your marriage will be celebrated. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. In Jesus' precious name. Please drop your offering and go back to your seat as God's servant. We welcome our Father to come and bless us. God bless you. Please wait. Oh, lift our hands to heaven. Everyone that stayed to this last service, the best God has for this month be released to you. In the marriage feast, the best came at the end. You have come to this special service for family progress. I decree your family will experience no regrets. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that came sick, you are pronounced healed. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Keep celebrating. Amen. The week is declared a week of favor. Amen. This week, everywhere you turn, God's mercy will locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a week where you will hear good news. Amen. A week where God will turn the table against our enemies. In the name of Jesus. Amen. A week of progress. Amen. A week of peace. Amen. A week of victory. Amen. A week of lifting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. The grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet love of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. God bless you. Remember to invite somebody for the week.